In the last 20 years, college football has undergone a significant transformation, shifting from a run-heavy under-center offensive attack to a spread-pass-heavy, super-offensive style of play. We witnessed the rise of the greatest dynasty in the history of the game and the introduction of the first-ever college football playoff. But what if we could reset history back to 2002 and see what changes? So I did just that. I started with a new NCAA roster and I created 30 of the best players players in college football that were playing in 2002 and I placed them at their respective school. But here's where it gets crazy. Every offseason I will create the top 24 recruit from that season's real life recruiting class and we will track the recruiting process to see where each one ends up. This recruiting is the lifeblood that will create the new college football powers and we will see who will rise to the top and create new dynasties that will reshape the college football world. We also follow along with each season looking at player stats, tracking team records, jumping into some of the biggest games from the season to watch live and seeing who is crowned national champion at the end of each year. And we will be doing this for each season from 2002 all the way until the end of the 2022 season. Now in total in this series, I created over 420 recruits, over 19 recruiting classes, and we will be simulating through 21 seasons. I believe this will be the biggest thing anyone has ever attempted in the history of NCAA football on YouTube. And this series will have four or five parts and in total, it will be more than 12 hours long. Now, this video is actually gonna be part two of this series. Part one is already up, and if you missed it, I will leave a link for it down in the description below. In that video, we went through the first six seasons. So we went from 2002 to 07, and in this video, we will be simming through five seasons, taking us from 2008 to 2012, and this is where this series starts to get really wild. All right, guys, so here we are. We are gonna be starting the 2008 season the 2009 recruiting class the recruiting class is made last season Penn State lost to Baylor in the national championship so it's been a few years since one of our teams or not our teams but one of the teams that's really recruiting a lot of our really good players has won but they're always right there. I think Notre Dame, Ohio State should be um, right there once again. Okay, we've already made the recruiting class. So we're gonna skip to recruiting. We're gonna check it out. All right, so we're gonna go through this recruiting class now. I'd say this is a good class. It's just okay offensively, I'd say. I'd say it's very, very good defensively. So that is kind of where we're sitting. So firstly, we have QBs. We have Matt Barkley, who was kind of a bust. He like was good in college, not amazing, but I believe he was like the number one QB, number one overall prospect in the class. So we definitely made him. He's leaning Notre Dame, Illinois, Texas, Michigan. That'd be a pretty big get as, you know, once Cam leaves, you have Barkley step in. Then we have Taj Boyd, who is a really good player for the Clemson Tigers. Um, he's leaning SC Texas uh, Army, which is my team that I don't actually control or do anything. Washington, Boise State. He's from Virginia and he's going out east, it looks like maybe, or out west. Then we have AJ McCarron who ended up at Alabama. He went to SC, Boise State, Penn State, Texas, Baylor. So those are three QBs. Not elite elite QBs, but good college quarterbacks. Okay, then we have running backs. We have three of them. Trent Richardson was an absolute freak show in college at Alabama. Here he's leaning Michigan, Texas, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Tennessee, and Bama. Then we have Eddie Lacy, another Alabama running back. Two just This guy's 250. Richardson's 238 just two absolute loads to bring down. He's going Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan, Tennessee, Minnesota. And then the last one is Monty Ball, who ended up at Wisconsin. He's leaning Tennessee, Oklahoma, Texas, Notre Dame. Okay, then if we go wide receivers, there's two of them. There's Tavon Austin, who is an absolute animal. One of the most exciting college football players of all time. He went to West Virginia in real life. He's leaning Penn State Navy, which I hope he doesn't go there. Notre Dame, Ohio State, Pitt, West Virginia. So he's from Baltimore, Maryland. Looks like he's leaning kind of in that Northeast area. Then the other one is Alshon Jeffrey. He went to South Carolina um, in real life. He is from South Carolina, but here he's leaning Texas, USC, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan. So I don't think there's any tight ends. There's no tight ends. So that's kind of it for offense. So some good players, but not those high level NFL Hall of Famers that we've had in previous years. We do have some good offensive linemen though. We have five offensive linemen. So we have Taylor Luan, um, really good tackle, played at Michigan, played for the Tennessee Titans. He's leaning Arizona, UCLA, USC, Utah, Cal, uh, Texas. We have DJ Fluker who went to Alabama. He's leaning Georgia, Auburn, Miami, 
Miami, Bama, ten, uh, Tennessee, Florida. Um, that might be it. And I think the rest are interior offensive linemen. So if we guard guard, we have Chance Warmack, who went to Alabama, was out a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. He's leaning Ohio State, Tennessee, OU, uh, Nebraska, Florida State. But once again, something that really just sticks out to me is how many of these guys do I say went to Bama and they are not even looking at Bama? Bama in this sim has not performed well at all. It's Ohio State, it's USC, it's Texas, it's Notre Dame. Yeah, Bama is just nowhere to be found. Okay, then we have Zach Martin who went to Notre Dame in real life. He's leaning Ohio State, Texas, Georgia, USC. And Gabe Jackson is our fifth offensive lineman. I believe, I believe Gabe Jackson went to Mississippi State um, in real life. I could be wrong, but uh, he's leaning Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, and out of Bama. So five good offensive linemen up for grabs as well. So that would be very interesting. Okay, now we go defense. And this is where we have a ton of talent. First, we have Khalil Mack absolute beast he ended up at buffalo the university of buffalo in real life um really unheralded i think he was like a two-star recruit but here obviously he's gonna be a five-star number one dm in the class he's from florida he's in, he's leaning florida georgia auburn south carolina bama um jarvis jones he's a georgia you know really good player went to georgia got drafted by the steelers i believe he he's leaning tennessee bama clemson florida georgia florida state I think that is it. Yeah, then the rest are gonna be off-ball linebackers. Do we have any D-tackles? Oh yeah, we have two good D-tackles. So we have Sheldon Richardson, really good D-tackle. I believe he went to Missouri in real life, but he's leaning Texas, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. Then we have Fletcher Cox, who's leaning Notre Dame, Texas, Ole Miss. So these guys both, these guys are both leaning Notre Dame, Texas. So if they both went somewhere, that would be insane. Two interior, just nasty pass rushers. Uh, we have nothing for outside linebackers, but we have a good few good, really good inside linebackers. So first we have Luke Keekley. He went to Boston College in real life, but I could see him as the perfect fit at Notre Dame playing in the middle of their defense. But Texas, SC, Ohio State, Michigan. He's really looking at the big time schools. And we have Vontez Burfset, you know, wild, wild child, played for Arizona State. Um, he's leaning Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan, Penn State. Then the last one, we have Manti Teo, who is unbelievable at Notre Dame. I think he almost went like, you know, almost won the Heisman, but he got like Heisman votes when he's middle linebacker for Notre Dame. He's leaning, looks like he's from Hawaii, so he's leaning kind of staying on the West Coast. We have SC, Cal, UCLA, Washington, Stanford, Oregon. So that is it for uh, linebackers. And we also have a, two really good corners. We have Mo Claiborne, who's from Louisiana, went to LSU in real life. He is leaning Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, Texas. Like those four teams, I feel like are in on everybody. Throw USC in there. And yeah, they're they're in on everyone. Then we have Stephon Gilmore, who went to South Carolina in real life. He's leaning Clemson, South Carolina, Georgia, Georgia Tech, uh, UNC. So I think that is the class. I don't think I made any safeties. I actually made this like two days ago, this class. So I was kind of remembering it as I go. But there we go, guys. That is what we are looking like. Um, we're going to sim to the season. We're going to look at the top 25, look at all our guys, see where we're all sitting. All right, so here we are. This is, remember, the 2008 season, guys. So in real life, this is where Alabama was really starting to take off. Like, this feels like I've been recording this for so long. And we still have, like, fucking... 12, 13, I don't even know how many more seasons we're gonna go, but we have a ton. Okay, here's the uh, Heisman. No Sean Marino is the only one. I don't know why our guys don't get more Heisman loved, our big time. They're the best players in the country, but we should look at the top 25. I'm guessing Ohio State, Notre Dame, one, two, maybe. Penn State is right there, but uh, they lost Chad Henney. I don't think they're gonna be in the mix. Texas, if we look at just overalls, I kind of look at like to look at these. So uh, Ohio State, 95 overall, 99 and 92. If we look at Texas, 99 and 97. And then same with, so Notre Dame and Texas seem to be the most talented with Ohio State, kind of Michigan, Nebraska. Okay, and USC's there too. I want to look at Nebraska. That's kind of wild. They're, uh, they're that high up there. Oh, Georgia too. Can't, oh, and Georgia's right there. So those are kind of the teams. I, want. I wish I could look at the rosters from right here. I can only look at team info and team schedule though. Um, yeah, so Ohio State, uh, Texas, Notre Dame. Michigan. I, I want to make sure I look at Nebraska because they're, you know, 95 across the board. They got to have some talent. So we're going to go take a look at the roster, see where everyone sits. I also, also want to look at just the overalls. First, I want to look at Bama just, just to kind of see just 
how the mighty have fallen. They've, they've got some decent recruits, but like, look at this. They just don't, their punter's their best player. If you take him away, they're a 96 and a bunch of just low 90s. So just not good enough. Uh, Auburn, uh, Landry, Bradford's a good QB as a junior, but like they're very similar to Bama. Good, not amazing. Baylor won the Natty two years ago. Oh, Boise State. Um, they just got, so let's see their QBs. They have a good Seth Warren, good junior QB. And at wide receiver, they just brought in one of the freakiest freshmen of all time, Julio freaking Jones. So he's their second or third best player already. He should be putting up some stats. Um, Clemson hasn't recruited great. They're, you know, always going to be around, but uh, yeah, I'm not super worried about them. Florida, Ray Maluga, you know, good but they actually look more talented than even Bama. So they've actually probably recruited a little better. Florida State has not. Florida State's in on guys, but hasn't really closed the deal. Okay, Georgia, this is our first team that's like a national title contender to me. So Sue, Eugene Monroe, Woods, Percy Harvin is a junior. Good running back there. Um, Vontae Davis is a junior, gonna be one of the best uh, corners in the country. Kenny Britt is a junior, but who's their QB? That's the thing. They lost their QB. They have this sophomore that they're gonna try to develop. They have not recruited QBs well. This is like their one weak point. They have not been able to get QBs in the door. They have receivers, they have running backs, they have a great O-line, but uh, yeah, there's a 94, 86, like really solid O-line, 95 and a 98 right tackle. Justin Houston is a sophomore. Uh, Matthew Smith, they have Courtney Upshaw as a backup. And Dominican Sue, maybe the best player in the country as a senior. Um, yeah, like they just have talent up and down their roster. Fonte Davis and Preston at corner, freaking 93 free safety so yeah they have so much talent but they don't have a QB so I think that is probably gonna close the door on them winning the natty but you never know LSU has not recruited you know up to their level so many of these guys too similar to Bama where I'm like oh this guy went to LSU in real life but they're not going there right now Louisiana Tech is interesting they've actually got some huge recruits they got Vaughn Miller and Joe McKnight in the same recruiting class so oh and LaMichael James as a freshman. So they have Joe McKnight, LaMichael James, and Vaughn Miller somehow, and a good QB. So I don't even know what conference Louisiana Tech is in, but they're probably gonna do some damage in it. Go to Miami, they've had a few really good recruiting classes. That 97 overall junior DeMarco Murray. They have their two DNs in Sergio Kindle and Brandon Graham. They just had the number one recruiting class in the country, I believe. So, you know, they're, they're not insanely talented right now, but they're getting, they're piling up some good recruits. Okay, we have Michigan, Jenkins, Mario Manningham, um, just talent, good talent, but yeah, see, they have a few really good guys at the top, but I don't think they're they're deep enough. Rhodes Senior, looks like he could be good, but uh, yeah, this guy actually, okay, so a sophomore next year, they'll have a good QB for the next few years, but I don't know if they have the talent throughout to, uh, to really, really go after. Okay, Nebraska is one of the teams I wanted to make sure I looked at. So they have this Trey Rawls, Really good, 89 speed, 98 overall senior quarterback. Gerald McCoy on the inside causing trouble. And then I don't remember them getting a ton of our other big time recruits, but it just looks like they're super deep throughout and a 98 overall, you know, quarterback. And we saw Penn State make the national championship with like a 99 quarterback senior last year. So that definitely lets me know like they have a chance. Okay, Notre Dame, they have Ray Rice, Felix Jones, Steve Slayton. Okay, so they did lose one of those running backs to the draft, but they have three senior 96 to 98 running backs. I wonder if, I wanna look at their wide receivers actually. I wonder if I made this, uh, this is maybe kind of cheating, but I mean, I wonder what his overall would be. Oh, can you not change their, oh, you can't, oh, you have to do it in the off season. I was gonna say, what if I changed his position to wide receiver, but I can't do it. So anyway, we're gonna look through, cause I do believe these guys are 100% national title. You know, maybe even favorites. They have Cam Newton, gonna be an absolute freak show for them. Only a sophomore and 95 overall. They have four running backs. Wow, they haven't recruited one since. They might be in trouble next year, but they have four running backs just ready to rock. Like this is their year there. They lost wide receivers. They have Michael Floyd. They have some good guys. They don't have that stud right now, but they have two young guys right here with Floyd and Fenton that they can just let grow with uh, Cam. And then Aaron Hernandez, only a sophomore as well. He is gonna be their go-to passing game option and he's gonna get a ton of work. Left tackle, not great. Uh, left guard, really good. Center, okay. Uh, okay, so their O-line isn't as good as I would have guessed. They haven't recruited the O-line amazingly. This 
because Burns, really good D-end. Chase, good D-end. Couple of really good, in oh, Xavier, or Cam Hayward in that really good recruiting class they had two years ago, and this Williams guy. Good linebacker, really good middle linebacker, senior captain of their defense, pretty good uh, right outside. Joe Hayden, one of the best corners in the country already as a sophomore. You see their sophomore class and how good it was. Really set the table like for how good they can be. And they have this Myron roll, really good safety on the back end. So they're gonna be right there, guys. I promise you that, okay? The other team that I think has disappointed me a little bit over the last few years, but they are gonna be right here. First, sophomore, 98 overall. He is a red shirt, so that gave him an extra year. Red shirt. Matthew Stafford, they could have a 98 overall quarterback, absolute killer from the pocket for the next three years. That's incredible. Then, yeah, like um, they're going to bring some guys in. Basically, if they get a recruit, one, one recruit over the next year or two, five star, they're going to be just in a perfect spot. They did lose Jamal Charles, but they have sophomore Beanie Wells. They have another really good running back in behind them, but have this Beanie Wells now for the next three years. Bring in one more recruit and you're gonna be good there. They got this Andre Jones who actually looks pretty good as only a freshman as well, but big, powerful downhill running back Beanie Wells. They have sophomore Des Bryant, their number one receiver. They could literally have Des Bryant, Beanie Wells, and Matthew Stafford for the next three years just running shit. Just, and they have AJ Green. I forgot they got AJ Green along with Des. They're gonna have AJ Green with Matt Stafford and Des Bryant for the next three years and then AJ will be a senior with this Justin Smith just in there for fun. Oh my goodness, they did lose your Michael Finley. They have a good tight end. Um, and they have this Brandon Irving who actually looks like he's gonna turn into a decent player. Kennedy, really good senior tackle. Is this Tyrion? And they have Tyrion Smith as a freshman. Guys, this offense is fucking loaded. Holy crap, Hunter Jones. They have Steven Wisniewski, only a sophomore. Yeah, and then a right tackle, Ota, only a junior. Still gonna be there for two years. Good D end here. Uh, I think their defense isn't quite as good. Their offense is unbelievable. Uh, Vickers, or Sanders, really good on the inside. He is a senior, though. Nigel, oh, they did bring in Marcel Darius, though. He's going to take over in a year or two, be absolutely freak show in the middle. Uh, really good senior middle linebacker, and they have a junior next year, so they're going to be good at middle linebacker for a few years. Their outsides are not great. Not great at corner, and a lot of seniors, so they're really going to have to recruit some corner. Yeah, so secondary is not good. I remember a few years ago, USC was loaded like this when they had, like, Liner, Adrian Peterson, Deshaun Jackson, all those guys, but they didn't have a secondary, and that really came back to bite him in the ass. So you got to watch for that Ohio State, but offensively, the these guys are loaded, unlike, I don't know if we've ever seen it over the next few years. Penn State was just in the natty. They lost their QB. They're decent. I don't think they're going to be back there. No Sean Marino. Going to be toting the rock for them hard. Okay, keep it going. Tennessee won the national championship a few years ago. They have J.J. Watt and Russell Wilson. You know, those two are just going to be, you know, sophomores really running shit for a few years. They have Patrick Peterson is only a freshman, so... They have a, some really high-end talent, but they don't have the depth across their roster. Okay, Texas, another team I think has a shot. So they are going to be, they have this Robbins and Andrew Luck is their backup. This guy's only a sophomore, so, and they have Terrell Pryor. So these two are going to be battling it out for the next three years. It'll be very interesting to see what happens there. I have a feeling Andrew Luck will overtake him, but looks like Robbins is going to start this year. They have LaShawn McCoy Jr. That's really good for them. Um, they don't have a young running back to take over, so they need to recruit one of those for sure. Good fullback. They have Michael Crabtree as a junior, but not a ton else. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't look like they've gotten any of this. This Watson guy looks decent, only a sophomore, but not a ton else. Herring, really good sophomore tight end. Uh, let's see their O-line, not great so far. Yeah, just, just okay on the O-line. Not dominant by any means, but looks okay. Rocky Henderson looks decent, Hawkins, Avery and Harris on the inside, good outside linebacker there, good middle linebacker, uh, okay there. Um, couple of decent senior, oh god, yeah, there's a, we're having like a shortage of corners, we're just not getting those, a really good freshman free safety there, and a good junior safety. So I don't think this team looks as good as Ohio State or Notre Dame, but they are going to be in the mix. Hey, Texas A&M, really good running back there. 
good throughout, but I don't think they're going to be, you know, in, in the hunt. USC, when we looked at their overall, I don't really remember, they have senior Deshaun Jackson, who's going to be one of the best players in the country. Senior Mark Sanchez. You just put those two together, you're in a really good spot. They have sophomore Jimmy Clausen, who's just going to be able to set step in for Mark, uh, Mark Sanchez. These guys have done an amazing job of recruiting the guy to take over for the guy. Like, they went from Matt Liner, Two years later, Mark Sanchez is the starter. Two years later, Jimmy Clausen's going to be the starter. So if they can get a good five-star quarterback, they're going to just keep going down that train. They lost Adrian Peterson, Marshall, and Lynch. They have not recruited another really good running back, which uh, could hurt them. They have Deshaun Jackson, Quinton John. So they, these two are, you know, that's a pretty freaking good pair. Uh, a couple of juniors who will step in next year, but they don't have that big time young receiver in the chamber. So once they lose Deshaun, they might be in a little bit of trouble. This feels like their year to me. They have Trent Williams as a junior. They had some really, really good recruiting classes and then kind of took a step back for a year or two. So I think if, if USC is gonna win a natty in the next few years, senior, this is this is their best shot. Senior quarterback, they have junior, uh, Geno Atkins, a junior. So they have a ton of just really good juniors and seniors you know there, there we go freaking three or two senior middle linebackers there probably one of them will play will uh good senior corner junior they actually have a pretty decent secondary like corners there considering some of the other high level teams that should do them well good good safety there and a good safety there so i still think ohio state and notre dame are my two favorites i think usc probably is the third best roster but yeah what about washington i know oh they have this door Okay, because they, they have this Dorch, but then they also were able to get Kellen Moore. He's only a freshman, so like red shirt. They have Taylor Mays. I just know they had recruited some good players, so I'm going to take a look at them. Yeah, so that's kind of our the big teams we're looking at this year. We're going to quickly just go through the players. So Mark Sanchez is the best QB in the country. Stafford's right there. Tim Tebow, we haven't really looked at North Carolina State. Like That's the only problem when these guys go to these lower schools. How, how was his year last year? Definitely improved last year. How was he running the ball? He ran for, okay. Okay, so Tebow's gonna be an absolute freak for North Carolina State. I don't think it's gonna matter, but we will see. Running back Ray Rice, Donaldson, Darren McFadden, another guy we just haven't seen a ton because he went to a small school, but Felix Jones, DeMarco Murray, LaShawn McCoy, Beanie Wells, CJ Spiller, another guy who went to that small school, so we're not gonna see him a ton. USC is the best fullback. So Deshaun Jackson is the best receiver in the country. Then we have Mario Manningham, Michael Crabtree is a junior, Percy Harvin is a junior, uh, Kenny Britt. So that's kind of our top level wide receiver talent tight end clemson uh miami no really huge oh, gronk only a sophomore one of the best tight ends in the country already rudolph at oh kyle rudolph went to and i thought he went to michigan he went to michigan aaron hernandez i know michigan got some good tight ends michael orr best left tackle in the country trent williams right in there behind him uh, if we go left guard that's kind of what we're looking at center Dunbar, good good players. Guard, that's kind of our best guards. Right tackle, it's Eugene Monroe and Andre Smith, uh, a senior and a junior. So Andre will be kind of taking that top spot next year. And we have Jeff, Jeff Ota as a junior as well. Robert Ayers, another guy who went to a small school, but really good for them. Uh, JJ Watt and Vaughn Miller right there. Brandon Graham, right end. There we go. D tackle, Parks, Ndamukong Sue might be the best player in the country. Uh, just absolute freak show in the middle. Gerald McCoy, Geno Atkins. Uh, left outside, middle linebacker, we have Brian Cushing. So Syracuse got Brian Cushing and Gronkowski. That's good for them. Maluga, mm, Laurinaitis, where did he go again? Oh, he went to Minnesota. Uh, nothing for right outside. For corner, Vontae Davis is the best corner in the country. The corners just have not been developing quite into those really, really elite players. Like by next year, Vontae will be, but uh, Malcolm Jenkins, best, best safety in the country. Pretty, pretty easily at free safety for Michigan. And if we go strong safety, yeah, so Malcolm Jenkins is just a cut above everyone basically at the safety position. All right, last thing I'm going to look at. I know this is taking a while, guys, but there's just so much information. I think it's also interesting. So these are preseason All-Americans, Michael Orr, uh, Eugene Monroe. It's just weird they, these guys, aren't, they're the best players in the country. Cam, No Sean, Mario Manningham, Deshaun Jackson. So that's a little more. Andre Smith, Joe Hayden. There we go. Okay, so that is where we sit, guys. Okay, we are going to sim to week nine through week eight. We'll take a look at recruiting. We'll look at the top 25, see how the teams are doing. All right, here we are in week nine. We're going to go through the recruiting. Here we go. 
So, QBs, we have Matt Barkley, looking like Illinois, Miami, Oregon State. Okay, so honestly, I'd kind of like to go to Miami. They haven't really got a high-level QB. They've had some good recruiting classes. USC, uh, do not go to Texas. I don't care where you go, Taj, do not go to Texas. You'll be behind Andrew Luck and Trell Pryor for the next three years. Okay, uh, yeah, I I'd like to see him at USC. I think that'd be a good fit for them. Um, AJ McCarron, okay, going small school right there. Kind of out of nowhere. All right, AJ. Okay, Trent, Michigan. This would actually be kind of wild because they just got Mark Ingram and it was Trent Richardson and Mark Ingram in Alabama's backfield. So Michigan is kind of trying to become Alabama up north, how they used to play offensively anyway. Then Notre Dame looks like they're on the outside looking in, but still has a shot. Um, And our other guys, Eddie Lacy looking like Minnesota. Maybe Ohio State, but it looks like Minnesota has them basically locked down. Monty Ball, Notre Dame. That would actually be a really good get for Notre Dame because we remember they're losing all their running backs. They had like a 72 freshman backup. So if they brought in Monty Ball, he'd be a good, just solid running back. He's not a dynamic player, but he'd be solid. Tavon Austin looking like he's going to go to Navy or Pitt or Penn State. So I don't know. Alshon, looking like Texas or USC. That'd be a huge get for either of them. Maybe Notre Dame too, but I'd like to see him either at Texas or USC. I think that'd be a good fit. Okay, if we go tackle, Taylor Luan is looking like USC, maybe Cal or Arizona. DJ Fluker looking like Georgia, Auburn, maybe Alabama, but it's not looking like it. I think that's it there. Then if we go guard, we have Chance Warmack looking like Ohio State, maybe Nebraska or Tennessee. Zach Martin looking like Texas, maybe Ohio State or Georgia, but looking like he's going to be Texas. Gabe Jackson looked like Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, or Tennessee are his top three. If we go DNs, looking like Khalil Mack is Bama, Georgia, or Florida, maybe Marshall or Ohio. Jarvis Jones looking like Georgia, Florida, Clemson. And last, oh, was it? I think it was just those two actually. And then if we go D tackles, we have Sheldon Richardson looking like Miami or Michigan or Ohio State. Neck and neck, duking it out for one of the best players in the class. Fletcher Cox, Mississippi State, Auburn, Ole Miss. So I think originally he was like in kind of like Notre Dame and yeah, Texas or something, but uh, Mississippi State, Auburn, Ole Miss for him. Outside, we have no one, but if we go middle linebackers, Keekly is looking like Texas. That would be huge for Texas, maybe USC or Michigan. Uh, Vontez is going to Notre Dame. So Notre Dame does get a big middle linebacker out of this class, which I think they kind of needed. Um, and then the last one is Manti Teo, looking like at, he is gonna be a Trojan. That is a good get for the middle of their defense. Uh, co corner, Mo Claiborne going to Texas. So Texas is looking like they could have a really good recruiting class here. Ohio State seems to be just missing on a few of these guys. Then Gilmore looking like Clemson or maybe South Carolina. So that is the recruiting class, guys. Here's actually just the top 10. So it's Richardson's the number one. Keekly, Claiborne, Claw, Cox, Fluker, Austin, kind of as we go down. Okay, now we're going to look at the top 25, see where all the boys are at. Ohio State looks like they're the number one team in the country at 6-0. Michigan 6-0. Florida State 6-0, which is kind of surprising. UCLA, Nebraska, Texas is right there. Penn State, USC still only one loss. So a lot of those teams we thought would be really good are really good. Um, one, two losses. I'm sure there's someone I'm not thinking of that is totally Oh, where's Notre Dame? That's the team. Notre Dame must have lost some games. Damn, I wanted to see that team around it. Wow, okay. Okay, actually, we might have to figure out... I might have to look at these schedules. When is Ohio State Michigan? That should be like the second lap. So last week of the season. We're going to sim to the last week. If Ohio State and Michigan are um, both like undefeated or one loss, we're going to check that game out. If not, then we'll just go to conference championship. All right. So I want to look. Okay. They're number three and two teams in the country. So Michigan has one loss. Ohio State has one loss. Wow. So yeah. God, Central Michigan. It sucks when these teams are undefeated because they're going to, they could get in. That sucks. Okay, but we're going to watch some of this Ohio State-Michigan game. That is a sick game. We're definitely going to check it out. All right, so we're going to go scores and schedule. We're going to look at the Big Ten here. Did that game happen? Did I miss it? Was it week 14? Oh, I thought it was week 15. So Ohio State lost and Michigan won. Frick, I thought it was week... Okay, so we're not going to watch that. Okay, we're just going to go to conference championship weekend. Sorry, guys. I thought it was last week, but it was second last week of the regular season. So that's unfortunate, but conference championship weekend. Okay, we're going to go look at recruiting here. This will be the last time we look at recruiting until National Signing Day. Okay, Matt Barkley is going to the U. I actually really like that. I like that. Barkley at the U. 
And they got the other five stars, so these guys are going to be duking it out. That is not one of our guys, though. Taj Boyd, do not go to Texas. Taj, do not go to Texas. Go to any of those other schools, I'm fine. Do not go to Texas. Uh, AJ, we know him. Okay, Trent. It's Michigan. Looks like he's going to be a Michigan man. Him and Mark Ingram in the backfield. Michigan fans watching this got to absolutely love that. Eddie Lacy going to Minnesota. That kind of just fits. Big just bowling ball. Monty Ball looks like he's going to lock in at Notre Dame. That's a good fit. I'm sure they would have loved Trent Richardson, but Monty is going to be a really good fit. Tavon's going to Navy. We're not going to see any of Tavon, but it is what it is. Alshon looking like USC Texas still has a shot. And then our... Oh no, it was just those two. Just those two for this class with no tight ends. Tackles, Taylor Luan is looking like it's SC or Arizona with SC having a good lead. Uh, DJ Fluker looking like he's gonna get, end up at Auburn. Um, guards, Warmack is going to the Ohio State. That's gonna be a big get for their interior line. And they might get Zach Martin. He's their Ohio State, Georgia's right there, or Texas. And then Gabe Jackson looking like Mississippi State. Okay, DNs, Florida getting Khalil Mack, one of the best players in the entire class. And Jarvis Jones might go to Florida too. That would be huge getting those two bookend DNs. Sheldon Richardson going to Ohio State. So Ohio State's really looking to load up in the trenches. That would be huge for them. Fletcher Cox looking like he might go to Mississippi State. So Mississippi State looking like they're gonna load up in the trenches as well. No outsides, Keekly going to Ohio State. That is huge for Ohio State. They needed some big impact players. Montez does go to Notre Dame, we knew that, and Manti is locked in at SC. So all three big schools get kind of those big corners. Mo Claiborne going to Michigan. That is massive, and Stephon Gilmore going to Clemson. That is the big, first big time recruit I, go, I remember going to Clemson in a while. So there we go, guys, that's recruiting. Okay, we're gonna go look at the top 25 quick here. Central Michigan is 12 and 0. If Central Michigan ends up in the national championship game, I'm gonna lose my mind. I don't even know what to do. That would be so shitty. Uh, Michigan, Miami, Ohio State. Give me a Michigan, Ohio State national final. USC two losses. Hopefully Central Michigan has a conference championship game and they lose. Damn, they do. They play Miami of Ohio. Please win that game. Boise State, Syracuse, USC, Stanford, Minnesota, Michigan. None of those are great games. We're just gonna sim to bowl season. Maybe we'll try to watch two bowls, even though this season is getting long right now. We're gonna sim to bowl season. Okay, so we didn't actually look at the Heisman. That was the winner. It wasn't one of our guys, but we will look at that uh, quickly here, so I don't forget. Crenshaw wins it. Uh, Mark Sanchez gets third. So still never one of our guys has won the Heisman. Okay, well, I saw the Natty. It's Michigan. Arkansas. I don't know who the hell is on Arkansas, but we will be watching that game. LSU, Navy, Missouri, Ohio State, Stanford, Georgia, four losses. I want to see where Notre Dame ended up. Uh, Cincinnati, Utah, Miami, SMU, Tennessee, Syracuse, Auburn, Nebraska. We just had not been getting those national championship games. USC ends up with three losses. That's tough. I, I really thought they had a chance. Where is Notre Dame? Notre Dame, five losses on the year. Wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah, I don't even know if there's another game I really want to watch. We just haven't got those great, great matchups. We're just going to watch Michigan, Arkansas here. I'm actually going to quickly, I, I, I don't remember Arkansas ever getting anybody we care about. They might, I mean, they, they only have one loss on the year. I'm sure they're decent, but uh, yeah, not. Oh my goodness, guys. They have a good, good running back. Not even great. And just a bunch of stuff. I cannot, I know. I'm probably gonna get some comments. There is a mod where you can do four teams in a playoff, but it's kind of complicated. And I was just really worried. I know it can mess with your save and stuff. So I really didn't want to me get to like seven, eight seasons in, try to do it. It messes up my data and I lose everything. And so that's why I didn't do that for this. But when the new game for NCAA comes out next year, I'm definitely gonna be redoing this whole thing on the new version. And we'll have, you know, 14 playoffs, some It'll be way, it'll be so sick. So I can't wait to do that, but I still think this is really cool. We just haven't got the best matchups. But if this, if this was a four-team playoff, we'd also have Miami and Ohio State and Arkansas, Michigan. And then we'd just have those four duke it out. It'd be all good. But unfortunately, we get this, but we'll definitely check it out. And here, Michigan fans just have to be licking their chops. They have a chance. They have a great recruiting class coming in, and they have a chance to just, you know, 
Arkansas had a great number one offense in the country, but if Michigan does what they need to do here, they are going to win a national championship and, you know, kind of walk back door into one. They beat Ohio State in that big game, secured their spot, and here we go. Okay, we're going to go to the, through the first quarter here. Arkansas actually is the lead. I don't understand this, guys. Michigan is so much more talented than they're getting their doors blown off. 38 to 10. If you look at Arkansas's roster, they have nothing. And Arkansas is driving. It's 38 17. Okay, so Michigan stopped them. If Michigan can score here, but they can't. They cannot. And that is going to do it. Arkansas is going to win the national championship. I cannot believe it. Look at their roster. Their best players in 93 overall running back. I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I didn't want to watch that. That's insane. What is up with this sim? This kid killed it. 427 yards, four touchdowns. I don't know if they debuted some new air raid offense or something. Smith had a big day. This McDonald had 166 yards. Manningham, like Michigan had a show. 194 yards for Mark Ingram as a freshman. Rhodes, wow. Arkansas Razorbacks are your national champions. I, I don't know what to say, guys. That is mind blowing to me. Michigan had the better team up and down, but Arkansas did it. Penn State had the better team to me when they lost last year. So I'm gonna stop being so uh, sure about who's gonna win these games and we just gotta see what happens, but wow. Okay, we're gonna go to end of bowl season. We're gonna look at the stats for this year. Uh, and then we're gonna go into recruiting and look at the final recruiting rankings and this will wrap up this season. So Arkansas defeats Michigan to win the Natty. Yeah, so these are our last four winners. So first year, just give everyone a little re recap. It was Ohio State won it, then Texas, then South Carolina, then Ohio State beat USC. Then all of a sudden it's gotten weird. Tennessee beat Notre Dame, which Tennessee is a big program, but Notre Dame is definitely better. Then Baylor beat Penn State, Penn State, and now Arkansas beats Michigan. So the last three years have just been kind of weird. You know, Ohio State, Notre Dame have had these amazing teams, haven't even made it. Ohio State hasn't made it in four years, so very, very weird but hey that's that's how it goes sometimes okay we're gonna look at the all, all the kind of just wrapping up stuff here so we'll look at all americans mark sanchez first team all american andre smith and that is kind of it For second team trent williams michael orr at tackles sergio kindle at dn brandon graham at middle linebacker that's not our brandon graham that's a different brandon graham there we go freshman all american mark ingram aj green Tyrion smith matt khalil marcel darius there we go. So that's all the All-American teams. Look at the final top 25. I can't believe how bad Notre Dame was up this year. Arkansas, Ohio State, West Virginia, Michigan. God, I wish it was Ohio State, Michigan in that night, even though Arkansas won, so I can't really say anything. But LSU actually had a good year. Tennessee, Miami, USC ended up... USC ended up with four losses, just really shit the bed down the stretch. I don't think they're going to be anywhere near it next year. So this was kind of their year. Okay, we're going to quickly go through the stats. First, we'll go through just all the league leaders, and then we'll go kind of just a little bit more deep dive. Okay, Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez was pretty cut and dry, along with this Key Smith from Arkansas. He had a great year, too. These were basically the two best quarterbacks in college football this year. Pretty clearly, Sam Bradford as well. This guy for Stanford, 20, and I think he... Look at his last two years, 2,100 and 2,300 yards his last two years. Wow, crazy. None of our guys really up near the top. Darren McFadden, Beanie Wells, both had really good years. Uh, receiving yards, Cox, Davis, Crabtree, like fourth in the country. Mario Manningham right there. TDs, there we go. Okay, let's look at defensively. Have anyone up near the top in tackles? Not really. What about tackles for loss? Not really. Sacks. <laughs> Not really. Defense, yeah, it can be harder just to like really stack stats on defense, obviously. Uh, nothing crazy for interceptions either. Okay, now we're gonna go just a bit more of a deep dive through some of our big teams or impact players we wanna look at. Alabama, we don't really care about right now. Auburn, Bradford. Honestly, only a 132 QB rating. Played decent, but not amazing. Uh, I'm gonna try to go through this pretty quick. Don't wanna spend too, too much time. Fresno State, Georgia. Georgia was a bit of a letdown, but what did I say? I, I said it would be because of their QB. They just did not have the QB this year to match up with the rest of their squad. Percy's only able to get you know 500 yards. 
absolute freak 20 yards per touch but uh, just doesn't get the ball enough um lsu don't really miami uh yeah i don't really care about them right now michigan mario manningham really good year they're gonna lose him which is gonna hurt they're gonna have mark ingram they're bringing in trent richardson i think as well they, they lose roads this sophomore qb actually looks like he's gonna be really really good so i think michigan's gonna be right there again next year uh nebraska had a good team coming in they had this rawls who had a good year not great um rawls also ran for 900 yards so i think nebraska was a top 10 team this year i thought they had an outside chance at making the natty notre dame um cam looks like cam actually got hurt for a little bit and they had to play this roy guy uh cam had a good not great year uh, rushing wise, Cam added 500 yards. Ray Rice had a thousand. Felix, Steve Slayton. Slayton, a lot of guys touching the raw. Not quite as good offensively as I would have guessed, though. Uh, Fenton was their number one receiver, a sophomore, so he'll be kind of growing in his role next year. They have Aaron Hernandez, Ray Rice, Michael Floyd as a freshman. So I, I still think they're going to be right around it next year, guys. They are so young, really talented. Okay, Ohio State. How did Stafford do? 2,700 yards, 32 touchdowns. Good. Looks like they definitely tried to run the ball a ton. Yeah. Beanie Wells really had a good year. Really, really good. 1,500 yards, seven yards per carry. Stafford added like 479 on the ground as well. So I might've made Stafford a little too fast, but uh, 11 touchdowns. So it looks like they're gonna be pretty run heavy, even with all their talent. Dez and AJ, you basically just can throw these two the ball. You really don't need much else. Stafford, Beanie Wells, AJ Green, Dez Bryant. You have those four, you are gonna be in a really, really nice spot. So they, Ohio State's gonna be right there, guys, next year. They're gonna be right in it. Only look at Texas and USC for sure. So yeah, Robbins did not have the best year throwing. Did add 700 yards on the ground. LaShawn, good year, 7.4 yards of carry. So when he's getting the ball, he's absolutely killing it. Crabtree had an amazing year. Still gonna be back next year. They don't really throw the ball to LaShawn. I definitely wanna use him more as a weapon in the pass game, but they're not really doing that. If Robbins gets a little better next year, they'll be in a good spot. Okay, last team I kind of want to look at is USC. Now, Sanchez had a great year. I don't know how this team lost four games down the stretch. Massey didn't, oh, like I think Massey actually might have been their starting running back. Could run the ball, it wasn't incredible. They had Deshaun Jackson, you know, really, really good. Wilson was good. They were really loaded. They must have just not been great defensively, if I had to guess. Um, yeah, so there we go. That is our final stats for the year. Um, I still think Notre Dame Ohio State, I'm going to keep saying it. Those teams are freaking loaded. Okay, we are going to get into the final National Signing Day. Look at the end of the recruiting here. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll be getting into the next season. Here we go, National Signing Day. Okay, here we are, National Signing Day. Quickly through the prospects. Uh, we know where most of them are going. And then we'll look at our top 20, uh, top five classes. Okay, Barkley, we knew that. Yeah, we knew. Oh, no, Taj, we didn't know. Ends up at Auburn out of nowhere. I don't even think it was all those kind of West Coast schools. Auburn. Wow. That's a big gap for Auburn for sure. Yeah. Miami gets the two five stars. That's big for them. Obviously Richardson ends up at Notre Dame. He spurred Michigan. Wow. Michigan just fell out of it. That is humongous for Notre Dame to get this guy. I was like, Monty Ball is going to be good for them. I literally said, but if they could have got Richardson, they would have been stoked. Eddie Lacy is going to end up says ball and ball gets some Minnesota uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame loads up. Running back was their one position on offense they needed. They also needed a wide receiver, actually. Oh, Alshon ends up at USC. That's a good get for them because they are losing um, Deshaun. Totally different player, but uh, no, that's a big get. Oh, and they got another five-star with this Mike Montgomery guy. Tight end, uh, we don't care about that, even though, okay, big, big get there. And USC, Dick Taylor Luan. So a couple big gets for USC. Fluker's going to Auburn, just over Auburn, or Georgia. I'm sure Georgia would have loved him. Warmack going to Ohio State. And they get Zach Martin. Wow. Ohio State. They had all the guys on the outside on offense. They... To get those two on your interior is absolutely sick. There was also uh, Gabe Jackson. He went to Mississippi State. Wow, Florida. We knew they were getting Cleo Mack and they get Jarvis Jones. They got two just book and DNs to send after QB. Sheldon Richardson goes to Ohio State. Ohio State making some noise. Fletcher Cox going to Mississippi State. Middle linebacker we knew. Keekly go. So Ohio State had a class, guys. Montez going to Notre Dame. Notre Dame did really well too, though. These two teams, like just back and forth 
forth. Mo Claiborne does go to Michigan, so Michigan gets a good, really good get there, and Stephon Gilmore going to Clemson. I cannot believe Ohio State just pulled that off. This team, num six five stars. That might be the most I've seen out of any team so far. Six for Ohio State. USC gets four. They didn't quite have as, you know, quite as deep. They just didn't get the three stars, so USC was right there with them, but uh, wow. Yeah, Michigan had a good, a lot of four stars, but six five stars is just sick warmack we don't know grigsby but he's a five star keekly we don't know hall zach mark then just a ton of depth to go with it that is crazy so this is one of the best recruiting classes we have seen debatably the best i still think that notre dame class with cam and they got all those guys like two years ago was absolutely sick usc did really well for themselves luan jeffrey is Davis, Montgomery. So they got a ton of receiver talent coming in, which they needed. And they got Manti Teo, who's technically only a four star, but he's debatably a five star. Notre Dame had a good class. Um, but yeah, Minnesota, three five stars. Florida, only one five star. Khalil's debatably the best player in the class and a ton of depth. And Michigan did really well. They got a ton of depth. Only one really elite level talent, but a ton of depth. But this Ohio State class, that could go down as a legendary kept class. I want to look at it one more time. Warmack, Richardson, Keekly, Zach Martin. Those four are, and then you throw in this Hall guy, Grigsby, just guys throughout. What a class, Ohio State. So that is going to be it, guys. That was the 2008 season, the 09 recruiting class. Arkansas won the natty. Ohio State has the number one recruiting class. These teams are so good. I, I One of them's got to win the national championship here soon, but we will see. All right, I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so here we go. We're about to start the 2009 season. We are starting to really get moving. This is going to be the 2010 recruiting class. So it is already made. We are going to hop in this class. I would say it's decent. This is not my favorite class. Honestly, it's pretty defense O-line heavy. There's not really a very good quarterback. Running back is open, like just one of them. Good receivers, good O-line, good D-line. So it's, yeah, it's just missing those big time running backs and uh, QBs. It's really kind of, you know, help make a class what it is. So there's only one QB. This is one of the worst recruiting classes I've ever seen for quarterbacks. Blake Bortles is by far the best one I could find. Um, it's from Florida, looking like Michigan, Tennessee, Notre Dame, Ohio State, SC. I actually made him pretty good. Like he was the third overall pick in the NFL draft. So he te definitely has a lot of talent, big arm, big guy can move. So should be decent. Then the best running back from this class, Marcus Lattimore, who was actually really, really good in college. And then he has suffered a really bad knee injury or he was like a borderline, like top 20 pick in the NFL draft. So kind of resetting his career and he should be a, a really good running back so tennessee ohio state georgia michigan uh florida and florida state or miami maybe uh then receivers we have deandre hawkins i believe he was like unranked or like a two-star recruit in this recruiting class so super low recruiting ranking but actually obviously really good turned into like a top two or three receiver in the nfl at his peak so he ended up at clemson in, re in real life he's leaning north carolina florida miami south carolina georgia or clemson then we also have keenan allen who actually got recruited he was like a top 20 recruit in the class but everyone wanted him to play safety the only place that would let him play wide receiver was cal that's the only reason he went there i think it was something with his brother too but that is why he ended up at cal but like alabama wanted him as a safety but we're keeping him at wide receiver and obviously he's gonna be really good. Michigan actually fits him to a T. We also have Indiana, LSU, SC, Navy, and Minnesota. Then we have Robert Woods, really, really good at USC. Great wide receiver there, had a really good, and I think he's still technically playing in the NFL. Um, I think he was with Tennessee last year, but he's leaning Texas, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida, Alabama, Notre Dame. We have Justin Hunter, who is a freak, really athletic, really good in college at Tennessee, really I'm pretty sure he was a pretty high recruit as well. He is from Virginia, but he is leaning USC, Michigan, Texas, LSU, Ohio State, Bama. And I think that is it for wideouts. But that's four pretty good wideouts. Uh, yeah, definitely good there. Then no tight ends. We go tackles. We have Jake Matthews. 
he went to Texas A&M. He's from Texas. He's leaning Texas A&M, LSU, USC. We have Central Henderson. I think he went to Miami, I believe. He's leaning Texas, USC, LSU, Ohio State. Luke Jokel, he also went to Texas A&M. He is from Texas. He went. He's leaning Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State. I think that's it for tackles, and we have a guard as well. We have Brandon Sheriff, who went to Iowa in real life. Still one of the better guards in the NFL right now. So he's Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Michigan. That definitely fits for Brandon Sheriff. I yeah, I, I see that 100%. Okay, then we move to defensive ends. We have Vic Beasley, standout at Clemson. Super fast pass rusher coming off the edge. He ended up being a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. And he is leaning Ohio State, Illinois, South Carolina, USC, or Tennessee. Then we have William Golston. He went to Michigan State. He's huge. 6'6", 270, 280. Uh, he's leaning Ohio State, Michigan, Minnesota, Notre Dame. He is from the state of Michigan. I think that's it for DNs, but we have some D tackles. We have Aaron Donald, who obviously was not a big time recruit coming out of school. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He went to the University of Pittsburgh, but right now, Ohio State, Penn State, Auburn, Miami. Whoever gets this guy is gonna get a freak of nature playing on the inside. Then we also have Sharif Floyd. Where did Sharif Floyd go? Florida, maybe? I can't remember off the top of my head, but good NFL player, played for the Vikings. I think he was a first round pick as well. Texas, Texas, Michigan, South, Southern California, Notre Dame, Ohio State, and I think I think that is it. Oh no, Dominic Easley as well. Oh yeah, right behind them. Dominic Easley, he did go to Florida for sure. He was like a first round pick by the Patriots. Penn State, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan. Kind of the big boys in on all these guys once again. Um, If we go, do we have any? Yes, we definitely have an outside linebacker. We have Anthony Barr. He is a Southern California boy. He went to UCLA in real life. He's 6'5", 240, 250. He can kind of do it all linebacker, cover, rush the passer. He's going USC, Stanford, Oregon, UCLA, Texas with Washington. Definitely looking like he's going to stay on the West Coast. Uh, then we have Alec Ogletree. He's leaning Ohio State, Michigan, Texas, USC, Bama. CJ Mosley, who went to Bama in real life. He's leaning Michigan, Tennessee, USC, Florida, Boise State, Alabama. What a fall from grace. Just not getting anybody. Okay, then we have a few corners. Or actually, we only have one corner. We have Dean Milner. Went to Alabama. He's actually leaning Alabama. I doubt he'll end up going there because no one does. But we have Auburn, Tennessee, Georgia. So all kind of that. Looks like he'll stay in the SEC. Uh, if we go to free safety, we have Tyran Math. Matthew, a Louisiana kid, went to LSU in real life. I really hope, I don't know why Navy is getting in on these big time recruits, but Illinois, Michigan, Navy, LSU, Miami, Missouri. Then we have Eric Reed. He's leaning Michigan, Miami, USC, Ohio State. And I think, oh, and we have LaMarcus Joyner. He's Florida State. Um, he's leaning Ohio State, Tennessee, Michigan, USC. So a few really good safeties, free safety, smaller with Joyner and, uh, and Tyran Matthew, but super athletic playmakers. I actually want to just see. So D-Hop, uh, Aaron Donald, Matthew, Keenan Allen, Robert Woods. These are just like the top, you know, 10, 15 prospects right here and where they're ranked. So that is the recruiting class for this 2010 season. Like I said, it's good. It's it's very good all over except QB and running back, which in college football, like that's what you want. You want a stud QB, you want a stud running back, um, obviously. So a little bit of a letdown there, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're still going to be in a good spot here. Okay, now we are going to look at top 25, look at uh, Heisman, all that type of stuff. Look at the rosters and see where everyone sits. Okay, so Ohio State is the number one team in the country again. Michigan is the number two team in the country. I, I really, I'm gonna sit into the middle of the season again, and I, if these two are still really, you know, high level at the end of the year, I'm gonna make sure we sim to week 14 and catch that game. We have LSU, 88 overall. I don't think they're actually gonna be up there. Miami looks super deep, pretty talented. Tennessee, USC, once again, 99s across the board. They should be right in there. This North Carolina team looks pretty good. Texas looks really good. Kind of the big boys, um, you know, Florida. 97 overall offense, that's good. Florida State, Nebraska, Oregon, Texas A&M, Iowa. And, oh, Notre Dame, well they just had a bad, I, I think Notre Dame is still gonna be in the running. They had a bad end to the year, but you know, like they're still super, super talented. One thing I noticed too, if you look at the prestige, I haven't really pointed this out, because 
I just wasn't even thinking, but I noticed. Ohio State's five stars or six stars. Michigan's only four. I, I think when I looked in the offseason, like USC's a four-star prestige. The only six-star prestiges were Texas and Ohio State and Penn State, but they Penn State did make a national championship. Arkansas just won it two years ago and they're only a two-star. So I don't really know. I'm assuming that is going to impact recruiting a decent amount, especially like, yeah, those are the only five stars. Even actually Notre Dame, no, Notre Dame is only five. I'm sorry, those are the only six stars. And I've seen Georgia too. Georgia is looking really good, but they're only four stars as well. So I don't know how much impact that actually has, but uh, yeah, it's interesting for sure. Georgia running back leading there, DeMarco Murray, Matthew Stafford. So we have a few guys in here. So DeMarco Murray at Miami looks like an absolute stud. Let's look at the preseason All-Americans. Taylor, uh, we have the running back from there, uh, from Texas, Crabtree, Trent Williams for USC. Andre Smith, Joe Hayden. This is like his second or third time already being an All-American. Uh, second team, we have Stafford, DeMarco Murray, Brian Beluga, Steven Wisniewski, Vaughn Miller, of course. 97 overall junior. Yeah, that looks like that's where we sit right there. Okay, now we're gonna go look at the rosters here. So this does take a little bit of time, but I think it's good to really kind of get keep track of where everyone's sitting, who's who's kind of the big team. So gonna try to go through them. Alabama just falling off a cliff. They have a good kicker. Their QB is still decent, but just not bringing in the boys, not bringing in the guns like they did in real life. Uh, Auburn lost uh, Sam Bradford, so they're probably not gonna be making any noise this year. Clemson Clemson's been getting some decent recruits, but kind of similar to Alabama. They never have had that really big surge yet. Florida looks good, but not great. Kind of similar, good, but yeah, not gonna be scaring anyone. Same with Florida State. Georgia, good running back. Percy Harvin, Fonte, Kenny Britt. They have a ton of talent at the top, but once again, Georgia's running into the problem. This John Fisher, he's better than last year, obviously. Even by next year, he should be pretty decent. They have this guy as a sophomore, but they have they have struck out on those big time QB recruits, which is really, I think, hurting them meet that peak that they could could get to. LSU has not, you know, got those big time recruits so far. Uh, Marshall, Maryland, Miami. Miami looks like they could be pretty, okay, yeah, Miami looks good. DeMarco Murray, Sergio Kindle. Yeah, oh, they I think they lost uh, Brandon Graham to the draft, um, but you know, ton of 80s, 90s. What's their QB position like? 84. Oh, they have Matt Barkley, true freshman starting. Not gonna be great for them this year, but should be, you know, setting them up for the future. They're probably just gonna ro ride DeMarco Murray and Bennett actually too, and just try to run the ball and keep it close. Michigan, good middle linebacker, guard. I don't know, this Michigan team looks good to me, not amazing. They actually have a good QB, this Cameron Brown. He's only a junior, 90 speed. They have Mark Ingram, this Samuel Simmons. Oh my God. Oh yeah, I, I was gonna say, I thought they got uh, Richardson, but he didn't, he went to Notre Dame. So they're set up though. They have a three-headed monster at running back, Ingram, Sam Simmons, and this Jacob Scott. They're all good to run the ball. They lost their big time wide out, but you know what? They're gonna be a very run heavy team with that QB in there as well. So I think Michigan has, air oh, they have Travis Kelsey at tight end. I forgot about that. They have, and Kyle Rudolph. So they have two really good tight ends. So you know what? Michigan is gonna be a problem this year. Okay, keep going down. Nebraska, Gerald McCoy, good, but I don't think they're winning it this year. Uh, Notre Dame, I've been, I've been singing Notre Dame's praises. I'm a little worried that Cam Newton is gonna go down that Vince Young path where he's super good overall, but for whatever reason, just can't put it together. So we need to see it from Cam this year. He had a good, actually a really good freshman year, but his junior year was a bit of a letdown, did get injured, so we need to see it from Super Cam this year. They have Trent Richardson and Monty Ball, two bowling balls in the backfield. Um, the Thornburg has a lot of speed as well. So I think Trent is going to be pretty big time for them as a freshman. This Fenton is a really good receiver. It's 96 speed, only a junior. They have Michael Floyd in the wings. Uh, they haven't got another big time recruit, but you know what? That's plenty of pass catchers, especially when you have Aaron Hernandez, only a junior, going to be here for all of Cam's career. So going to be in a good spot there. I think their O-line is just okay. Um, if we look at the rest of their roster, we'll just go all positions. Joe Hayden, one of the best corners in the country. Yeah, I mean, I think they're not going to be incredible defensively, 
but they're going to be good and they're going to be okay and offensively they should be just an absolute dynamite I'm, i swear to you i'm not an ohio state fan but what ohio state has been doing through this sim they've won an natty so you can't say they haven't and other than that, like they're just doing everything they're getting recruits insane recruiting classes every year they could have stafford for two more years this greg woods only a sophomore actually looks decent don't oh they lost beanie wells to the draft so this is the first time they have reggie bush jamal charles beanie wells this is the first time they don't have that elite elite running back but this guy actually looks pretty good 88 overall 95 speed you'll take that they have des bryant aj green crazy they have this justin smith guy doesn't look like they've gotten any other recruits but they have aj green and des bryant they're good for first they're good for now they have a good sophomore tight end who's going to step in this team tyron smith only a sophomore oh my goodness they are just so deep. I, like these guys need to put it together and do something this year. Good, strong safety. Free isn't great. Corner's not great. So once again, I think their secondary could give them problems. They have Keekly waiting in the wings to step in for Grant next year. So they're going to have a good captain in the middle. They have Marcel Darius, only a sophomore. And they got Sheldon Richardson. They got Marcel Darius and Sheldon Richards, Richardson at D tackle. Sophomore. So their DNs aren't great. But overall, this, this team is the best team in the country. They need to do something this year. I've been harping on him but they just have all the talent in the world um penn state looks good tennessee jj watt russell wilson and patrick peterson they have a great threesome but i don't know if they have enough depth at the rest of their roster but you could basically stack those three up just about against anybody go to texas texas is gonna have a shot this year they got andrew luck starting Terrell Pryor is a backup. Luck is already in 94 overall as a freaking sophomore. They have LaShawn McCoy, but they are losing their running backs next year. They do. This guy actually looks pretty good for a freshman, not one of our guys, but looks good. They have Crabtree. They don't. Did they? Ah, oh, they all, I thought they were gonna get. They were. They were in on another really good recruit, but they're gonna lose Crabtree and Lashawn after this year. So this kind of feels like their year to really make it happen. They're gonna be still good next year with luck, but this is the year I think. Like, man, they are super deep. 88s, 90s, all throughout. They they need to make some noise. Golden Tate. We have not even looked at him. Uh, 600 yards. He he's been good, but uh, I forgot about him. Yeah, AM hasn't. Oh, and they have Kendall Wright. So they have some good receivers, but. I haven't made noise. The other team that has been pretty disappointing, but just talent every year is USC Trent, Gino. A lot of just good recruits that aren't even part of our system. They have Jimmy Clausen at QB, only a junior. You know, they need to bring in another guy, but they have it still. They lost out on their big time running backs, but they have some decent guys. They did lose to Sean Jackson. They have a few, two good seniors, but uh, then they have a junior. Okay, so they're keeping it going. They got Alshon Jeffrey in the wings, you know, a really good freshman. So they're keeping the pipeline going. These guys have every opportunity. You know, they got to make it happen this year. UW, Kellen Moore, step in. He's only a sophomore, so. There we go. Okay. All teams are just going to look at quickly the best players in the country. Tim Tebow in his senior year. Wasn't even that good last year passing the ball. Ran the ball well. I mean, I don't think North Carolina State is going to do much, but they got Tim Tebow. We have Cam Newton, Stafford, Russell Wilson. So we have a pretty freaking good foursome at the top of college football. We have DeMarco Murray, LaShawn McCoy, CJ Spiller, who we have not seen much of at all. He had 1,200 yards last year. Some really good running backs at the top there. Fullbacks, uh, wideouts, Crabtree and Percy Harvin are the two best in the country. We also have Kenny Britt. Daryl Wilson is an our guy. Dez and Julio. Julio's a 94 sophomore at 7. 700 yards as a freshman so he's ready to step right in rob gronkowski had 1400 yards as a sophomore and 14 touchdowns so gronk absolute freak show you have aaron hernandez really good as well travis kelsey only a sophomore in the wings only had 200 yards last year but in a really good spot trent williams brian beluga there uh none of our guys really at left guard center we have wisniewski is the best center in the country for ohio state Michigan is the best guard in the country. Right tackle, we have Andre Smith at North, North Carolina easily. Barrett Jones stepping in for Ohio State. Ohio State, man, loaded. J.J. Watt and Vaughn Miller, the two best left ends in the country. Right end, we have Sergio Kindle, senior at Miami. Everson Griffin, no? Yeah, Everson Griffin, only a junior, wow. Gerald McCoy and Geno Atkins, the two best D tackles. 
have some other good guys coming up as well. Left outside, don't really have any middle linebackers. We have Jer James Laranitis at Minnesota, fifth year senior. We have Brandon Spikes, both 98 overalls, two best middle linebackers in the country. Right outside, I don't think we have anyone really right now. Corners, Vontae Davis, best, best corner in the country. Joe Hayden right there behind him. Those guys are kind of the studs. Patrick Peterson at 92 already as a sophomore. For free safety, we have Earl Thomas, best in the country right now, along with Eric Berry. Both went to small schools, so we're not really seeing them a ton but obviously doing their things both juniors right now strong safety we have Matthew Noble not a, uh, not one of our guys but at Texas so those are the best players in the country guys those are kind of the best teams we are now going to sim to week eight we're going to look at recruiting look at the top 25 and see how everyone's doing all right here we are in week nine we're going to go through recruiting quickly here oh, prospects so QB five star I don't know if he's any good but he's going to Notre Dame that's good for them uh, Bortles is going to Oklahoma. That is the first big time recruit, I think this whole time from that we've made has went to Oklahoma. So that's a big get for them. Running back, Lattimore is going to Tennessee. So they're, you know, get another big five star. They're just not getting enough of the like decent guys to fill out their roster, but they're doing a good job picking up five stars. Looks like Hop is going to South Carolina look, for the most part. Uh, that's pretty decent. Keenan Allen leaning pretty heavy USC, maybe Indiana. Robert Woods is leaning UNLV, Florida, Ohio State, but Texas is in first. I like that for him. Justin Hunter also leaning USC. Justin Hunter is someone I could see Ohio State really wanting. They need someone to step in here for once they lose Dez and AJ, and Hunter would be the perfect fit. So I could see them really trying to push for that. Uh, if we go tackles, Matthews is leaning AM or USC, maybe Texas. Central is looking like Miami, maybe Texas. Troy Johnson is not our guy but we have Luke Jokel who's leaning Ohio State Michigan Nebraska so kind of all in a close horse race there Brandon Sheriff for leaning Michigan or Iowa obviously he fits in Iowa but if he wants to go to a big school Michigan is like the perfect fit for him he's just a big mean run blocker Vic Beasley is going to South Carolina so if they get Vic Beasley and DeAndre Hopkins that would be huge for them William Golston is our other guy he's going Michigan it looks like fits there he's from the state big strong physical football player that fits that Michigan way Oh my goodness, Aaron Donald might go to Bowling Green or Auburn. I guess I hope Auburn, but we're not really going to hear from much from any of those teams. Um, Sharif Floyd, SC or Texas. So that's a big battle right there. Dominic Easley looking like Penn State or Tennessee. If Tennessee could wrap him up, that'd be a couple big recruits for them. Uh, Alec Ogletree looking like Michigan or you know Ohio State down to those two. CJ Mosley is going to go to Virginia or Michigan. And was that it? I think that was it for those two. And then we have... Uh, Outside linebacker Anthony Barr is really neck and neck Oregon uh, and USC. So that's going to be, if USC is able to land him, that would be huge. D. Milner is looking like Georgia, Florida, Alabama. So all three really close there. Then we have our three free safeties. We have Tyran Matthew looking like Texas Tech, LSU, or UTEP. Eric Reed is committed at USC. That's a big get for the back of their defense. And Lamarcus Joyner is committed to Ohio State. That is a big get for their defense. Okay, there we go. So that's where our recruiting is sitting. Let's go look at the top 25 i hope our big teams are doing well i want to see a crazy matchup in the natty michigan six and oh north carolina six and oh florida state seven and oh west virginia kansas ohio state one loss okay we're simming to week 14 we're gonna watch that usc one loss i like to see that georgia two losses where's notre dame notre dame just can't three losses can't get it out of their own way unreal wow notre dame that much talent and they are just shitting down their leg. Bryce, none of our guys, DeMarco Murray and fifth in there. Okay, we are gonna sim to week 15, 14. That should get us the big game between Ohio State and Michigan. Hopefully they're both at just one and zero losses. All right, so here we are. We're not gonna look at recruiting anything. I wanna look at the top 20. Yeah, they're one and three in the country. This is what we wanted to see. Florida State right there, Florida. Winner of this game should have basically booked their ticket as long as they can win the Big Ten Championship, probably against Florida State. I don't really know how much talent Florida State has, but uh, USC maybe could sneak in if Florida State loses a game, Florida, Texas. But yeah, okay, we're just going to watch this game. I should be doing this more often is trying to find some regular season games to watch instead of relying on like the national championships. You never know. It could be just a bad matchup. We've definitely got our fair share of that. But this 
This is not. One in three in the nation. Let's get into it. All right, so this is where they sit. Ohio State, the number one offense in the country. Michigan not far behind at number three. Michigan does have the better defense by a decent amount, so it is just going to be... We have some big guys visiting today. Robert Woods, Alec Ogletree in the building. Wisniewski, Stafford, you know, just talent. This, this is going to be fun. We, I should be doing this, especially with how good Michigan and Ohio State have been throughout the whole thing. Yeah, we got to do this more often. Michigan, Ohio State, let's go. We are in Ohio State. Ohio State is the team with a loss too, so... This is huge to have the kind of the home field advantage here. So we're just gonna go to the next quarter here and we'll see. Okay, Michigan has a seven nothing lead, super close. Okay, 14-7, uh, I was trying to get in there to watch, but uh, yeah, Ohio State just was able to score there. Okay, yeah, that's, that's gonna take us to halftime here. It is gonna be 14-7, Michigan, Ohio State. We're gonna go to the fourth quarter. Okay, it is 21-20, Michigan is driving. We're gonna watch some of this drive right here. So this game is back and forth one point game to start the fourth quarter michigan football michigan is in the shotgun they have this fast athletic quarterback he does a little pop pass over the middle that might be travis kelsey number 11 that is big travis kelsey making plays for this michigan offense michigan getting kelsey and mark ingram here really good o-line not a ton at receiver they lost mario manningham but just kind of a really well-built team Fits his Michigan blood. Brown drops back. He did actually have that guy, but he overthrew him in the flat. So right here, four, third and three. This is where you think this is Mark Ingram time. Time to hand the ball off to him. They have Kelsey kind of in the slot there, number 11. He's going to be their big time wide receiver type weapon. Oh, a little counter in Ohio State's defense. Bursts into the backfield, brings down Mark Ingram. And Michigan is going to punt this football. Okay, we are going to sim a little bit of this ohio state drive they got it going a little bit they are in ohio state territory 5 30 left we have stafford at quarterback we have aj green and des bryant they don't have that big time running back but this guy 49 actually looks good and he just broke a tackle deep in i was just saying they don't have reggie bush they don't have jamal charles they don't have beanie wells but this jones guy andre jones has 118 yards fast you know, pretty athletic. But I mean, you got Matt Stafford, AJ Green, Des Bryant. You want to put these guys to work. They have actually have a good like sophomore tight end, I believe as well. Good O-line. Stafford throws it away. Okay, here we are on the seven yard line here. Stafford in shotgun, kind of a split back look. If AJ and Des, I'd like to see him to go, go to, oh my God, they run, run a little triple speed option shovel pass there. That was not it. They, uh, they're trying to use Stafford's legs a little bit there. Not what I would have done. Now you're, uh, you're, you're, you know, this is tough now. You're 11 yards out. You need a big play here. You don't want to obviously throw an interception. You want to be able to kick a field goal and be in the lead. Checks it down to the tight end, or that actually might be Des there. Yeah, that's Des Bryant for a four yard reception, but Michigan's defense is right there to wrap him up. Ohio State, yeah, they are able to kick a field goal, go up. Okay, that's back to back. Okay, this, oh, it's fourth and six. Michigan is ha gonna have to punt this football. I didn't actually, I thought I was gonna be able to watch the third down play, but Michigan is gonna punt this ball, and that's gonna be tough. Now they're stuck to, it is Mich Ohio State football. You're, you're asking for trouble now. Only four minutes left. That is obviously not ideal. We're going to just sim a little bit. Six yard rush. Stafford throw away four yard rush. They were able to get the first down. The fumble recovered. Oh my goodness. Ohio State just fumbled with three minutes left. Up two. And now this is, this is an amazing spot for Michigan. They can run the ball. They have three minutes. They can use Mark Ingram. Dump it off down low to Travis Kelsey. You have all the different options. They're actually going to do a drop back pass. Oh, and their QB's got speed though. It looks like he was going to be caught in the backfield, but instead he gets 11 yards inside Ohio State territory. Michigan. Wow. Oh my goodness. They are still out of field goal range, but now they, they can do anything here. They can run. They could pass. Just read options. Anything you want. They are going to read option. Keep it with their QB. He gets to the edge. He might be gone. He's got the corner. He's inside the three yard line back to back cameron brown this guy looks like a stud he's only a junior he's going to be back for next year unless he leaves for the nfl for michigan what a spot they almost are going too fast so there's still 240 left so even if ohio state gives it up here which they oh they're actually short just short there but even if michigan scores 
Ohio State's going to have plenty of time. They are going to need a touchdown, but uh, hey, you got Stafford, AJ, Dez. You have the horses to go make a play. That's about as, that's more than you could ever ask for. Michigan is, oh, they didn't even try to, oh, little flip nine. Mark Ingram gets into the end zone. Wow. Michigan. Huge fumble by Ohio State. Michigan gets the ball. They go right down the field and score. Here we go. Des Bryant returns it only to like the 16, 17 yard line. So they have two minutes to go the whole field. They need a touchdown. Field goal does them nothing. Touchdown wins it though. Touchdown extra point. So this is it up to Stafford. Oh my God. They're running a little speed option. It actually kind of works, but not great. Second and six, only gained four yards. They're actually hurrying to the line here. Uh, Stafford's in shotgun. They snap that quick. Quick little dump off there, but do not get much. That is Justin Smith. That is their third receiver. It is now third and four. They are hurrying to the line. They do have three timeouts. Stafford has not had a great day, honestly. This Michigan team has been doing a good job of locking up. They have Mo Claiborne on the back end. There's a strike, though. Is that AJ Green throws two people off him? That is what they needed that is what the doctor ordered huge pickup for AJ that gets into the 45 yard line and all of a sudden now Ohio State has a pulse they know they have a shot now still a minute and a half three timeouts Stafford drops back delivers a huge strike along the sideline once again Justin Smith okay here we go now all of a sudden back-to-back -back plays where Ohio State gets a big gain on this Michigan defense all of a sudden now Stafford has a little bit of confidence. He's dropping back. He has a nice pocket. Nice. Another strike out to their tight end, I believe. All right. Wow. Ohio State, 120 left. This would be a storybook drive for if Stafford can cap this off. This could book their ticket to a national title game. If not, they're going to lose to their arch rivals at home. This is... This is a ton on Stafford's shoulders, but he has to make a play here. He's got Dez and AJ, ton of other weapons around him. It is go time, young man. Stafford making a little adjustment at the line, second and 10, at about the 30 yard line, ton of time. He's actually gonna tuck this and run. D tackle misses him and Stafford has an opening. Oh my goodness, Stafford, don't fumble and he slides. Looks like he was gonna take a hit, but he slides down to the 11 yard line. Wow. Eight 18 yard gain. Now if Michigan's feeling it. They have four downs to get these 11 yards and win this game. Ohio State a minute left. Three timeouts. They're actually going to run the ball. They have a decent hole, but the linebacker comes up and sticks them. They only gain about a yard. Still 50 seconds left. Two timeouts for Ohio State. They have running back to his left. AJ and Dez are the two wideouts. A little motion trip speed option and stick. Why are they trying these speed options? Stafford just got freaking decapitated. What is that? I don't know why they're doing that. Third and 12 all of a sudden now. You're down to one timeout. Now Ohio State is reeling a little bit. Back to back, not great play. Stafford drops back, a little bit of pressure and he throws it away. Sometimes the computer will do weird stuff, guys. I don't think Stafford in real life is ever throwing that football away like that. But uh, here we are, all of a sudden, fourth and 12. Ohio State, this is it. Now or never. What are you gonna do? Matthew Stafford motioning out his tight end, drops back. They're bringing a bit of blitz, but he has a ton of time and he's going down. That is it. Michigan is gonna win it. Stafford holds it on for too long and that is it. Michigan comes into Columbus and takes down Ohio State. They are undefeated going to the Big Ten Championship game and Michigan has a clear cut opportunity to win the national title. Wow. Ohio State looked so good there. They had it first and 10 from the 11 yard line, you know, four downs and they get two losses on the play. So that is how it happens sometimes guys, Michigan takes it okay let's look at the stats really quick this brown guy did throw two interceptions but he ran the ball really well as well 55 on the ground ingram just played okay tillman was kind of their leading receiver for ohio state honestly their their offense played like not that good they ran the ball well but stafford did not play very well 197 yards and an interception kind of that not great plays at the end of the game there but michigan takes it Ohio State down. Michigan books their ticket to the Big Ten Championship game. They win that. They are in the natty no matter what.
Okay, then we're just gonna sim through the conference championship games, honestly, and we'll just see who's in the natty. Okay, we're actually gonna look at the recruiting as well. This will be the last time we look at the recruiting until National Signing Day. All right, so QBs, we know Bortles is going to OU. Running backs, I think we know. Yeah, Lattimore is going to Tennessee. Wide receivers, D-Hop, South Carolina. Keenan Allen is leaning pretty hard SC. That is a big get. Robert Woods going to Florida. That's a good get for them. Justin Hunter is down to USC or Ohio State. That is a huge battle. Ohio State better just be hoping he goes there. He would be the perfect, you know, kind of young guy to bring in. Jake Matthews, Texas or USC look like one, two. Texas and USC for Central Henderson. Texas does get this Troy Johnson though, who isn't part of our thing, but he is a good tackle. Luke Jokel, Spurs, Michigan is gonna go to Nebraska. Then we have Brandon Sheriff, who looks like he was leaning pretty heavy Nebraska he looks like he's gonna stay at home in Iowa you know what that's a good get for Iowa he's gonna fit in well there Vic Beasley is going to South Carolina William Golston he was gonna go to Michigan he was like full bore and he is out is that Akron I think or Eastern Michigan so he's gonna go to a small small school Aaron Donald okay don't go to Bowling Green Auburn is much better than going to Bowling Green Sheriff Sharif Floyd is going to SC that's SC he's having a pretty good recruiting class so far Penn State is getting Dominique easily uh, outside linebacker Anthony Barr leaning SC or UCLA. SC is the chance to put together a very, very good recruiting class here. Ohio State or North Carolina State looks like he's going to get Alec Ogletree and then CJ Mosley is going to Michigan. So if he goes, if Ogletree goes to Ohio State, they're just kind of splitting those two five star linebackers. D Milner is looking like he's going to go to Florida or Georgia. Uh, free safety Tyran Matthews looking like he's going to go to UTEP. I don't know why those really good safeties are not going to big schools like with Eric Berry and Earl Thomas as well but Eric Reed going to SC. SC is putting together a recruiting class ladies and gentlemen. Ohio State getting LaMarcus Joyner. Ohio State also putting together a very good recruiting class. So that is where we're sitting there. Okay we are going to look at the conference championship games here. We have Miami of Ohio, Tulsa, Tennessee, Arkansas, Utah State, San Jose State, North Carolina. That is actually a huge game. I gotta kinda look at who's on North Carolina. Michigan just has to knock off Iowa and they're in and they're probably gonna play the winner. North, if Florida State wins, they'll play Florida State. So I wanna go look at those two teams. I wanna see if like USC, how many losses they had. Texas is only two losses too. Tennessee, Ohio State, USC. So if Florida State loses, it's basically wide open for Texas, Tennessee, USC, Ohio State, North Carolina. Any of those teams could jump up. If Florida State wins, we're gonna get two undefeated teams in the national championship. Okay, I wanna look at Florida State, North Carolina, Florida State. Decent, good QB. No, it's a good team. I mean, they're not, they haven't got our big recruits or anything, but they're decent. They have a good senior quarterback. North Carolina, what about them? Oh, they have Andre, so they have some, okay, they actually look pretty freaking good. This Albert Lewis. Okay, they look like the better team to me. That doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot, but they have a ton of talent. Wow. Okay, yeah, they have QBs. They have, they have another good one. They have Blaine Gabbard as a freshman. Uh, do they have much at wideout? Uh, some decent wide receivers, but man, this North Carolina team looks really good. I'm actually probably going to pick them in this game, but we're just going to sim through, and uh, I'm kind of hoping Florida State lost. We just get some commotion, and we'll see who's in the natty. I hope Michigan wins. Just I want to see that 12-0 Michigan team in the, in the big game. All right, Bryce Green, the North Carolina running back, wins the Heisman. Okay, let's see. It's Michigan, uh, Florida State. I just seen it. So yeah, so two 13-0 teams. I would have liked to see like SC 10 and two in it or someone like that. But uh, you know what, Texas, Tennessee, that's a good freaking game. Ohio State, Arizona in the Rose Bowl. So we had some really good teams this year just miss out. But we had two 13 and 0 teams. I don't think this Florida State team is that good, but I've said that the last few years. So Florida State is probably gonna win. Let's be honest, but because the last three times I think I've said, this seems like a mismatch. One team is gonna win. But I really think this is Michigan's year. Let's get into it. So that's where they sit offensively. Very, very similar. Like basically identical offensively. Wow. And then defensively, they're basically identical too. So I don't know. I, I Obviously, I think Michigan has more talent, but uh, you never know how this is going to work. We're rainy. We're in South Florida, it looks like we are. But hey. This is gonna be anyone's game. I like Michigan, but like I said, I've been picking wrong. Okay, we're gonna sim through the first quarter here. Okay, we have a 14-7 Florida State lead. Uh, we're going to the second half here. Okay, halftime 24-14, Michigan has the lead, so. 
kind of doing work, okay, but we're gonna be close. We're gonna go the fourth here. Okay, it is 28-31, so very, very close. Florida State has the football. Looks like it's third and 12, we'll watch this play. So third and 12, they can still tie it even if they don't score. The rain is coming down in droves. QB drops back, throws it, and he is going down. So if they make their field goal, it is gonna be a tie ball game here. Nice play by the Michigan defender. Yeah, so tie ball game. I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna watch the whole drive, but we will uh, We'll see how this drive looks and we can hop in if they do some damage, which they are. So 4-14, we are gonna watch this Michigan drive from here. Four minutes left. This is what Michigan football is all about. They need to pound this rock, make this defense pay, and go score a touchdown, giving Florida State two minutes. They got this athletic QB, perfect triple option. Gets it out to Mark Ingram who breaks a tackle drives in oh my god i really like this michigan team i just like how they're built tough hard-nosed football they have another really good recruiting class like michigan is going nowhere yeah they are they are here to stay i don't even know here we go shotgun look drops back plenty of time fire oh he had a guy i don't know if he was throwing it out of bounds there but he, this guy this camera guy is putting up stats of 400 yards Michigan. Okay, they're on about the seven, eight yard line right here. Under center, Mark Ingram is back in there. They have Travis Kelsey, of course, definitely a weapon in the red zone, motioning him across the field. They're trying to eat some clock here, not give Florida State much time left if they do score. Travis Kelsey's open in the flats, but he let him out of bounds. He had to throw that half a second earlier and let Kelsey turn up field. Okay, you, you want more than a field goal. You don't want a field goal here. You want to punch us in if you're Michigan. Florida State, if you can hold them to three, you're going to get the ball. Three timeouts, three minutes left. You're in a fine spot. Okay, drops back. Nothing, and once again, he had the guy in the drag, but throws it too late. That is gonna do it for that drive. They are gonna have to kick a field goal here, and Florida State is gonna get the ball back. Yeah, so field goal is good. I'm gonna sim a little bit of this drive. First and 10. Okay, so Florida State actually comes up short. We're gonna watch this. Okay, they are going for it. So fourth and three, not the ball game. Florida State still has three timeouts. They could stop Michigan, but this is huge. If they get it, they're still in it. If not, they're going to be in a tough spot. Michigan defenders moving around. I'm guessing they're going to run this football, but we will see. QB and shotgun. What are you going to do? I don't think you should be wasting too much time. Little run up the middle. Ton of yardage. That is huge for this Florida State team. Okay, now it's third and 11 all of a sudden. I, I, this season is going long. I don't want to watch too, too much of this game, um, but here we go. You know, third and 11 game on the line checks these guys are thrown to the flats too late you, you gotta let your guys have some room along the sideline there okay here we go shotgun little tight end action fourth and eight drops it in but along the sideline and that's not gonna do it they have three timeouts but the timing from these quarterbacks has not been where you need it to be okay we're gonna sim one play oh we actually sim no we sim one second and eight uh florida state use their timeout so michigan if they they need to Get a first down to ice it. Little run here with Mark Ingram, but he gets absolutely met in the hole. That is a great play by the linebacker. We're gonna get third and six here. Amazing play by the linebacker, meeting Mark Ingram in the hole and bringing him down. We are in I form, double tight end. Kyle Rudolph, Travis Kelsey, and he has a hole. That is gonna do it. Mark Ingram falls forward, huge hole, and that is it. Michigan Wolverines are gonna win the 2009, um, 2009 National Championship. Michigan Wolverines held off against their arch rival Ohio State in the last regular season game of the year, won the Big Ten Championship game, beat Florida State in a close nail biter in the rain. Dirty, nasty, just how Michigan likes it, and that is it. Michigan, natty. And they have some recruiting classes there. Young, Ingram's only a sophomore. Michigan is here to stay, I promise you that. Kelsey, I think, is a sophomore or junior, so they have a ton of talent. Their quarterback's gonna be back next year. It is set up. This Evans played really well for them. Rusher, Jarvis Cook played well. You know, receivers did decent for Michigan. Barry, Parker both played well. Ingram played good, but made the huge play when it counts. And honestly, I love their quarterback. This Cameron Brown, four touchdowns, 337 yards. Absolute beast. There it is. Michigan defeats Florida State to win it all. So that is actually back-to-back -back Maddie's last year. I forgot Michigan made it last year. So yeah, Michigan is on a roll. 
had some good recruiting classes. We are gonna dance through this to the end of bowl season. Take a look at all the final stats for the year, top 25, all Americans, all of that. Hey, let's look at the final top 25. Michigan, Tennessee, Ohio State just missed out. Florida State, USC actually had a good year finally. Georgia, Florida, Texas had a good year. Uh, Notre Dame, once again, you don't notice there because I think they had like three or four losses once again. So Notre Dame has not. Cameron Brown, this guy, I love this guy. I don't know. He just seems like an absolute freaking beast. Ran for 800 yards. First team All-American. Sick. Uh, Travis Kelsey, first team All-American for Michigan. Had 1,000 yards. Was their leading receiver, I'd assume. Trent Williams, Andre Smith, bookend tackles there. Dre Kirkpatrick. Uh, Justin Landry is in our guy. Yeah, so there we go. That's first team, second team. Evans, that's the QB for Florida State. We just seen DeMarco Murray. None of our receivers. Geno Atkins at D-Tackle. There we go. Let's look at freshmen. Tavon Austin at Navy. 600 yards. Good year. Taylor Luan at SC. Zach Martin. Chance Warmack. Oh, my God, Ohio State. Khalil Mack. Big year for Florida. Sheldon Richardson. So, Ohio, Ohio State had, like, four freshman All-Americans. Dre, a five. I don't even know who this gig Grigsby is. Dre Kirkpatrick. I think he was first team All-American. Our second team, Keekly. Wow, so Ohio State. As good as Michigan is, and they won, this Ohio State team just keeps getting better and better, in my opinion. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the stats for the season. Okay, Dorch, wow, played really good for UW. Over a 200 rating, um, most passing yards. Jimmy Clausen actually led the pat country in passing yards. He's gonna be back next year as well, so that's big. Um, passing touchdowns, Jimmy Clausen was third, so. Hey, that's great for USC. Only seven interceptions. Um, let's look at rushing. We've still, this guy, 2,300 yards, and he's back next year. Wow, jeez. Wow. Okay. We just haven't had a guy who's in this spot where he's just going to, like, carry the ball an absolute shit ton. CJ Spiller, 1,400 yards. But if you look at receiving yards, no one near the very, very top. Oh, there's Crabtree right there. Okay. We're going to go by individual team now. Oh, actually, I wanted to look at defense. Let's see. Uh, usually the defensive stats are kind of whatever, but uh, yeah, none of our guys rated right at the very top there. Tackles for loss, nothing really. Sacks, nothing crazy. Interceptions, nothing super crazy. Okay, now I want to look at just individual players and go through the teams a little bit. Don't want to go too, too hard, but try to find up some of our big guys. Florida, I don't think they really have anyone actually. Florida State, they just did make the natty. This QB played really well. Wow two 1,000, so they were able to run the ball. They were just built to pound you down. Wow, so Florida State, hey, they did work. Second in the country, we'll take it. Georgia just doesn't have the QB. Miami, uh, Barkley, as a freshman, I mean, probably I mean, pretty good. Threw some interceptions, but they're losing to Marco Murray and this Bennett guy, so they're losing their two big rushers. But they're gonna have Matt Barkley as a second year player. That should be good for them. Michigan, this Brown guy, Cameron Brown, 6'3", from Texas. Runs, passes, does it all. Two 1,000 yard rushers. <laughs> as well, they're both back. Like, I don't think really Michigan's losing like anybody. Bringing back all their pass catchers, only this guy here, a senior fullback. All their pass catchers are back. Like, they could easily go back to back. Travis Kelsey for freaking sophomore for them. I'm sure they're losing some guys on defense, but wow, this team is set up, man. Michigan Wolverines, national champs. Okay, keep going down. Notre Dame. Cam Newton, 125 rating, 2,000 yards, just not good enough. Cam has been a super letdown to me. Monty Ball actually outrushed Trent Richardson. Richardson might've got injured. Cam at 746, which is good. But uh, I mean, they're gonna have these two freshman stud running backs. So either way, they're gonna be fine there. Hernandez, Greg, Michael Flo, like this team could easily do it next year. They're gonna have a 99 QB. I've been saying it for a few years and they have not put it together. So I'm gonna stop counting on it. There's no reason they should not be good next year. Okay, Stafford, 2,400 yards. Might've got injured a little bit, it looks like. 30 touchdowns, good year. Should expect another. Oh yeah, he did get injured. Um, rushing, Andre Jones. So they have, you know, this guy's back next year, a sophomore. He's an 88 overall. It's gonna be really good. Des Bryant, AJ Green. <laughs> they have the studs there as well. 
This team is gonna be right, right there. Studs all over their defense, all over their O-line. This team is set up for success, but they gotta start winning one here, you know? They're not being like Notre Dame, where like they were third in the country. If they beat Michigan there, they're probably the national champions. So, you know, they're, it's not like they're embarrassing themselves, but hey, you gotta put it together at some point. Stanford, TCU, Tennessee. Uh, Russell, uh, not a very good year at all. How did he only have 1,300 yards? He had three 1,000-yard rushers. So it looks like they just want to run the ball every play. I don't know. You're not going to win a national title like that. Andrew Luck didn't even start this year. They started this Jeff Robbins. Okay, so it looks like Andrew Luck's going to have to wait till next year to be the starter. That's unfortunate because he's losing Shady and he's losing Crabtree. So... I don't know. I don't know if they have a ton of other weapons in the uh, in the arsenal waiting. Um, okay, let's go to USC. Jimmy Clausen had a really good year. Led the country in passing, uh, rushing, decent but not great. Receiving, you know, these guys are all young. Oh no, they're seniors, but they have some young guys coming up. They actually are bringing in a crazy recruiting class. So SC is not going anywhere. They didn't, you know, disappoint anyone this year. They played well. They weren't able to get it done, but next year they'll be right in the running. So Michigan, 09 national champions. We are now gonna just go to national signing day. That'll, that'll wrap this season up. All right, we are at national signing day. Go through everybody really quick. I think we know most of the guys. We know Bortles, he's going to Oklahoma. Lattimore, we know, is going to Tennessee. Wideouts, there's still some in the air. Hopkins, Keenan Allen, SC. Robert Woods, Florida. Hunter, SC. So Ohio State just loses out on Justin Hunter. That would have been huge for them, but USC bringing in Keenan Allen and Hunter, that is a great get for them. We had no uh, no tight ends this year. Tackles Matthews going to SC. SC getting Central Henderson. So SC just had kind of a recruiting class for the ages. Jokel, I think last year, who was the recruiting class last year that was unbelievable? It was, check my notes, Ohio State had a crazy recruiting class last year. This recruiting class might be up there. Um, guard, Sheriff going to Wisconsin, Spurs, Iowa. But fits in at Wisconsin, obviously, also. And Brad Ross, not the guys after, but he's going to SC, another five-star. Vic Beasley going to South Carolina. William Golston is going to, I believe that's Akron. Um, so small school, not going to see him much. D tackle, Aaron Donald, Auburn, Sharif Floyd, SC. Okay, this SC recruiting class. Be easily going to Penn State, like that fit for them. I was about to say, if SC got Anthony Barr, okay. This SC recruiting class is fucking insane. Alec Ogletree, Ohio State, CJ Mosley, uh, Michigan, Corner, D. Milner, Florida, uh, Free Safety, UTEP. We know Eric Reed's going to SC. I don't even know. This SC class, guys, is eight five stars. Eight. I think last year, Ohio State, I was like, I haven't seen anyone with six before. On paper, this is the best recruiting class we have ever seen. Sharif Floyd, Keenan Allen, this Ross guy, Anthony Barr, Justin Hunter, Central Henderson, Eric Reed, Jake Matthews, and a, you know, a good four-star group as well. That is insane. Wow, Notre Dame, good recruiting class in second, kind of continuing their trend of getting Oklahoma, first time I've seen them near the top. Ohio State and Michigan. Michigan, 18th, where's Ohio State? All the way down at 20th, only 17 recruits. They did get Joyner and Ogletree, but uh, missed out narrowly on a few guys that really brought their standing down but this sc recruiting class one for the ages eight five stars wow sc doesn't win a natty in the next few years after that recruiting class we're going to be asking some big questions so the kind of the standout class is off the top of my head i'm actually going to put some stars behind me beside these notre dame with a year they got cam they had just a crazy they had like cam joe hayden all those guys uh, Ohio State last year, who did they have? They have like Keekly, uh, they had Darius, they had a bunch of O-linemen, and then this USC one here. I think those off the top of my head are the three best recruiting classes I can see. USC has been recruiting like hell though. They had number one in 04, number one in 05. They weren't there the next year. The next year they were number two. Last year they were five and this year they're one. So they, them and Ohio State recruited the best for sure. But all right, 
There it is. That is going to wrap up the 09 season, the 10 recruiting class. Next, we got 10 season, 11 recruiting class. Let's go. All right. So here we are, guys. We are in the 2010 season. We are in the 2011 recruiting class. Michigan is defending national champions. USC just had, you know, one of the, probably the best recruiting class we have seen yet. I just made the 2011 class. We are just going to get into it right now. Now, this is a very, very good class. This is up there with one of the best classes we are going to see. It's definitely more offensive heavy for sure. Very offensive heavy. It is very good. So first at QB, the number one QB in the class, Marcus Mariota, won a Heisman, obviously went to Oregon. He's from Hawaii. West Coast usually is where these Hawaii guys end up and USC is his number one school, but a lot of SEC, East Coast, Michigan, Ohio State. So he could really go anywhere. Then we have Teddy Bridgewater. He's from Florida. He's leaning Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, UNC, Miami. Miami. And then we have Braxton Miller. Now I made him, he played wide receiver and QB at Ohio State. I made him a QB and he's not a great thrower, but he's insanely fast. I made him like 93 speed, crazy runner. So I believe that's Miami of Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio State, Michigan Navy. Then the last QB that we made is Johnny Manziel from Texas. He's leaning Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, LSU. If Texas was able to get him back up Andrew Luck, once Luck is gone, he steps in, that would be huge. Okay, then for running backs, I think we have three. First, we have Devontae Freeman, who went to Florida State in real life. He's leaning Michigan, Texas, Florida State, Georgia, Ohio State. Then we have Meldon Gordon from Wisconsin, went to Wisconsin in real life. And he is leaning Florida, Notre Dame, Michigan, Georgia, LSU. Then lastly, we have DeAnthony Thomas. Now, DeAnthony Thomas went to Oregon kind of as a running back wide receiver. They played him more at wide receiver, but we had, so, you're about to see guys, we had so many receivers in this class. I moved him to running back. I think it'll just be more interesting for him. Small, but catch the ball fast, just make plays with the ball. So his number one schools are Tennessee, Alabama, Notre Dame, Georgia, Ohio State, Florida. So those are our three running backs. Then we go to wide receivers, and this is probably the best and deepest wide receiver class we have had yet. So Marquise Lee, not the best wide receiver in the class, but he is ranked number one. He's looking at Texas, Michigan, USC, UCLA, Florida, and Northwestern. Then we have Jarvis Landry, went to LSU. He's from Louisiana. LSU is his number one school. Then we have Texas, Mississippi State, and Arkansas. We have Calvin Benjamin, who went to Florida State. His number one schools are Tennessee, Notre Dame, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, Florida. We have Brandon Cooks from California. He went to Oregon State in real life. His number one schools are Bama, Notre Dame, Tennessee. Tennessee seems to be in on a lot of these guys. Georgia, Ohio State, Florida. And then lastly, I believe, oh no, we have six. Oh no, we're missing one still. Uh, uh, we have uh, Odell Beckham who went to LSU from Louisiana, Tennessee, Bama, Notre Dame, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida. Then I don't know. Okay, I don't know if I somehow didn't make him. I might have accidentally canceled him. Oh, there he is. Somehow he's way down here, but we have Sammy Watkins. He should be a five-star. Trust me, his overall is very high. Florida, Michigan, Georgia, Ohio State, Penn State. He went to Clemson. He is from Florida. So crazy group of receivers, ton of talent there. We also have one tight end. It is Austin Safarian Jenkins. He's from Washington State. Oh no, this is the wrong guy right here. I His name was too long, so I called him Safarian Jank. That was the max I could put. He went to Washington in real life. Um, he's looking at Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Notre Dame. Okay, then if we go tackles, we have three tackles. So Greg Robinson, he was like, I think he might have been the first overall pick to the Rams in, in the NFL draft. LSU, AM, Arkansas will miss. Then we have this Kuan. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. I believe he went to Alabama. We have Tennessee, Ohio State, Michigan, Texas, and Florida. And then lastly, we have Lael Collins who went to LSU really good player in college Bama Tennessee LSU Notre Dame Michigan so I haven't noticed Ohio State and Michigan really high on a lot of the guys list there which is surprising because they've been doing so and USC really either so this could get interesting okay then what many people consider the greatest college recruit ever the best college prospect ever coming out of high school is J Devon Clowney he is from South Carolina he went to South Carolina in real life he's leaning Notre Dame Georgia Bama Tennessee Ohio State Florida Miami 
and South Carolina. So really up in the air. Stefan Tuitt, he went to Notre Dame in real life. Ohio State, UNC, Mississippi State, Florida State. And I think, yes, that was it. That was it for DNs. We do have two D tackles though. We have Jordan Phillips, big 6'6", 345 pound run stuffer. Bama, Notre Dame, Tennessee, Georgia, Ohio State, all the big guys. And Timmy Jernigan, he went to Florida State. Florida, Florida State, Miami, Bama. Bama seems to be, in, Bama always kind of seems to be in on these guys and never gets them, but we'll see. Okay, then number one linebacker in the class, Ryan Shazier, went to Ohio State in real life. He's going Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, uh, South Carolina, Ohio State, Bama. Then we have two safeties and that is going to be it. So we have HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix first. He went to Alabama. He's Florida, Notre Dame, Georgia, LSU, Michigan. And the other one is Quandre Diggs who went to Texas. He's Florida, Notre Dame, LSU, Mississippi State, and Georgia. So that is a recruiting class, guys. Pretty freaking good ton of stars kind of all over the place like i said definitely offensively heavy but uh guys who can make noise kind of just throughout so we're, we're gonna we're gonna be in a good spot okay we're gonna start the season here we're gonna look at the top 25 look at the rosters all that stuff all right so here we are in week one we are gonna look at the top 25 first so preseason polls first number one team michigan makes sense they are 99 overall 99 offense 95 defense and we have usc who actually looks a horrible defensively in comparison they are number two ohio state ohio state michigan look like the two best teams just off the rip texas usc in there north carolina is going to be pretty good but oh yeah notre dame isn't real oh that well, that's navy where's notre dame i still think notre dame has a chance yeah they're 97 overall notre dame has a chance they haven't put it together under cam newton at all but they have every opportunity here's the uh heisman favorites it's not a, not one of our our guys has won the heisman ever which is, just makes zero sense but whatever this cameron brown this guy was an absolute freak show last year he led michigan to a natty he is back he has every opportunity to be unbelievable this year Tavon Austin is a preseason first team All-American Brian Beluga Steven Wisniewski back for his senior year uh Vaughn Miller back for his senior year at Louisiana Tech uh Drake Kirkpatrick for Florida only a sophomore first team All-American so that's what we got there let's look at second team Jimmy Clausen senior at USC did USC we'll have to look I can't remember if USC's got a QB recruit coming in after him um Travis Kelsey at Michigan only a junior 95 overall only a junior had a thousand yards last year Tyrion smith only a junior that might be it for preseason so that's preseason all americans that's kind of what the squads are looking like okay we are gonna look through some of these rosters see how the squads are looking i always like to look at alabama just because we got so used in real life to seeing alabama just be great every year they, they look okay but just have not even been on the doorstep of really making noise auburn i got oh they got tyrod taylor and ryan mallet Wow, they have 298 overall. Honestly, this team looks pretty good. Janoris Jenkins, Aaron Jones, Aaron Donald, DJ Fluker. Okay, Auburn is kind of going low-key hard. Taj Boyd is a freshman. Look at their QB room. Jeez. Okay, so I haven't even really been paying attention to Auburn, but probably should be. Wow, okay. We gotta be on the lookout for them. Uh, Clemson, not really recruited great. Uh, they got De Stephon Gilmore and De Daquan Bowers on the back end on their D, but Florida, they got this Anthony McKinney senior. They have another senior quarterback. Khalil Mack, only a sophomore, 94 overall. Uh, like They look pretty good. They look, they'll make noise. I don't know if they're national title contenders, but Florida State, definitely not. Georgia hasn't really kept up that recruiting they were really kind of in it at the start of the sim but uh hasn't really stuck with it with the really high level recruiting classes lsu same thing just not really the high level recruiting classes miami's had some good ones they've lost some guys over the last few years they've sophomore Barkley and I think they had the number one recruiting class not that too long ago but it looks like it hasn't developed like perfectly well okay Michigan defending national champs they have a junior Mark Ingram senior starting quarterback maybe the best quarterback in the country not overall wise but he played so good last year another good running back there with Mark Ingram we know they are just going to be trying to run the ball Matt Khalil only a junior 
Um, Kyle Rudolph, two amazing tight ends. Mo Claiborne, only a sophomore on the back end of their defense. They just always do really well in the sim games as well. So I see no reason Michigan isn't going to be right there at the end. Okay, I want to look at this North Carolina team. They're one of the number one teams in the country. Lane Gabbert, only a sophomore. He's a 93 overall. So he's developed really well. They're a deep team. They play in the ACC, so they don't play the hardest competition every week, allowing them to get a decent record. And yeah, they have every shot. Notre Dame. So this is their senior year where they had the recruiting class with Aaron Hernandez, Cam Newton, Joe Hayden. I think they had one other huge guy as well. Those three are really their best players. They have Michael Floyd, only a junior. If Notre Dame is going to do something, they have Trent Richardson as a sophomore. Like, they have no holes. No holes on offense. Like, oh my goodness. Like, if they are going to do something, if they are going to make noise, this is the year. This is it. Cam, this is your last year. You've not been, you, you've got worse literally every year he's played worse. So this is Cam's year. He has got to do it this year. Okay, then we have Ohio State. This is Matt Stafford's last year. He has been at Ohio State forever. This guy will be the starter next year and he'll be okay, but they haven't got that guy to come in. So they really need a young QB to step in for Stafford. This Andre Jones isn't one of our guys, but he is very good. 94, 96 speed, really good. I've been saying this Ohio State, Des Bryant, senior year, AJ Green, junior junior they don't have that young this guy looks pretty good but they don't have that really stud young receiver stepping in the wings so as good as ohio state has been at recruiting their o-line is insane like tyron smith they have this hunter jones wisniewski their backup centers in 96 they have martin and warmack both sophomores and they have a, they, that may be the best o-line i've seen in the entire sim ever so this is probably the best offense maybe we'll see the whole time stafford the best o-line good running back and aj green and des bryant i don't know if we'll ever see a team put together an offense this talented again in this whole sim. So if Ohio State doesn't win it this year, doesn't win one with this Stafford kind of group, I think it has to be considered a pretty big failure. So there's a ton of pressure on them to really get it done this year. Okay, keep going down. I wanna look at Texas and USC. Oh, Tennessee as well. They have JJ Watt, Russell Wilson, Patrick Peterson. This Joel Allen's good. So they have four basically studs and then just a bunch of like decent guys. So. If they want to win, it's going to be on the back of Russell, JJ, Patrick Peterson, but that's going to be tough. Okay, for Texas, they have Andrew Luck. They have Terrell Pryor, two unreal QBs. Terrell Pryor is 96 speed now. Really good tight end. D tackles, D ends, another good QB. Yeah, like this team's really good. They lost, um, yeah, see the, their problem. I don't know if they have the playmakers. This Watson, senior though, he's gonna be gone. Seniors, like they haven't got that big time recruit on the, at receiver either. This tight end's really good, but he's a senior. So they have them good weapons this year. Texas is gonna be in the running for sure. AM, uh, Golden Tate, Tim Smith, Kendall Wright. They have an unreal re receiver room. Uh, QB's just okay though, so. I don't see Texas A&M doing a ton. Going down to SC, and once again, this is another team where they just haven't quite gotten it done. They have Jimmy Clausen as a senior. They have another team who hasn't, they haven't recruited that really. So this is Jimmy Clausen's last year, and then they're gonna probably play this Donnie Neal next year. So this seems like a bit of a, a transition year where some of these teams who consistently had, uh, they have some crazy receivers now though. Hunter, Keenan Allen, Alshon Jeffrey, young guys. So if they're able to ever get a QB, he's gonna be in a great spot but uh, they have to recruit them. So th yeah, this feels like a bit of a transition year where we have some teams who are gonna be losing their quarterbacks and we're gonna have to see how they can recover. Okay, we're gonna look at some of the best players in the country. We have some really talented QBs this year, 399s, a lot coming up, but like imagine this is your one, two, three, all coming out in the same and then i mean this guy too he's 94 speed but cam newton stafford russell wilson if they all came out in the same year if we kind of knew about russell is now that's pretty scary uh running backs joe mcknight best player best running back in the country overall wise mark ingram is right there and he's only a junior Lamichael michael james 
uh, was backing up at Louisiana Tech. So he's at Ohio State. So that is where we're all sitting, guys. So that is what, you know, kind of the top rosters are looking like, the best players. We are going to sim to week nine, and then we are going to take a look at recruiting and see how all the records are looking. All right, so here we are in week nine. We're going to look at recruiting here. I already saw a huge one. So Marcus Mariota leaning USC, but he's honestly, he could go anywhere at this point. It would be absolutely massive for USC to get him, though. They are losing Jimmy Clausen. Mariota could just step right in. Teddy Bridgewater. Tennessee is losing Russell Wilson if they could get Bridgewater to step right in. But Georgia, Florida, North Carolina right there as well. Braxton Miller going to Cincinnati. So we're not going to see a ton of him, but that's a big get. Johnny Football. Basically, A&M or Texas. That would be massive for Texas if they were able to lock him down. Uh, Devontae Freeman going to Michigan. That's a huge get for them. You know they are just going to want to run the ball. Anytime they can get a big five-star type running back, that is going to be massive. Florida, Notre Dame, a bunch of teams really close here in on Melvin Gordon. So I'd say that that one's really up in the air still. And then De'Anthony Thomas, Notre Dame, uh, kind of all up in the air. A bunch of teams in on him. But uh, yeah, so we don't really know with him yet. Marquise Lee leaning Texas, USC, Boise State, BYU. A few teams in on him. Jarvis Landry, Texas. UTSA, Mississippi State, so lots of teams kind of in the running there. Kelvin Benjamin, Tennessee, again, Tennessee's in the running on a lot of these guys. Ohio State, Bama, Notre Dame is out of it, so he's kind of down to his top three. Brandon Cooks, like, like he's probably going to go Georgia, maybe BYU, Tennessee. Odell Beckham, wow, is that the, I don't even know what logo that is. I'm blanking right here, so there we go. That's where Odell Beckham is going to go, I guess. I don't love when they go to small, small schools, but there we go. And then lastly, somehow he's so far down but he's actually really good is Sammy Watkins who's looking like he's gonna end up at Penn State there we go okay then tight end Aust no not this Mike Alexander Austin Safarian Jenkins is locked in at Notre Dame that is a big get for them taking over for Aaron Hernandez they get really big time tight end weapon Okay, we have Louisiana Monroe. Is that is that that school? I'm not even sure. Then Arkansas, LSU, Texas A&M. Um, we have Texas, Tennessee here. So, but Ohio State's also in the running there in Michigan. Um, Thad Williams isn't one of our guys, but a few four-star tackles there for Notre Dame. That was it for there. Then we have guards. No, we have no guards. We have DNs, and I already seen this, but Clowney is going to Notre Dame. So that is a huge gap for Notre Dame. Then Stefan Tuitt, looking like Ohio State, maybe North Carolina, Florida State. Those are his three he's down to. Then if we go D tackles, Jordan Phillips, Tennessee, a lot of guys leaning around T Tennessee. I don't know how many they'll end up with, but Timmy Jernigan, Florida. Florida's also in on a lot of these guys as well. Okay, middle linebackers, Tennessee again, right there with Georgia and Florida for Ryan Shazier. Uh, if we go corners, we had none. We had two free safeties. Oh, ha, ha Clinton Dix, Florida. So Florida looks like they could have a really good class. Quandre Diggs, Mississippi State, LSU, or Utah, I believe. So there we go. That is where we're sitting with that recruiting class. Not seeing Ohio State, Michigan, or SC having really good classes there, which those three have pretty consistently had great ones. So, so that is a little interesting. Okay, we're going to go to top 25 here. We will see. So Ohio State, 6-0. Washington, 7-0. West Virginia, Minnesota, Stanford. Tennessee, Michigan does have a loss. Alabama, 7-0. Okay, Penn State, 5-1. UNC, Texas, 3-3. Three three. So that means USC and Notre Dame. Well, I mean, Notre Dame's only lost two, but two this early isn't great. And it must mean USC has lost a few because I don't see them at all. So that could be hurting their recruiting as well. So... Honestly, guys, this makes me think I, I want to sim it to that Ohio State Michigan game again. I know, like, I've been really a lot about Ohio State Michigan in this sim, but they're both playing so well. The winner of that, if they both have the records it looks like they're going to have, is basically going to book their ticket to the national championship. So I definitely want to try to watch that again. And this this Ohio State team is so stacked. I, I want to see them in person. All right. So here we are week 14 here. We're going to look at the top 25. So Ohio State, yeah, they're the one in two teams in the country. We got to check that out. Washington's right there. North Carolina. This Washington team, I know they have Kellen Moore. They have a few good guys. Uh, Bama's right there. Tech, like Bama has one loss. They have actually a chance to make it this year. Tennessee, two losses. Ohio State, three. Kind of out of it, but at least a decent year in cams last year. SC has four losses with that pretty good team. That is just too many. Florida State, only two losses. Somehow they're ranked 20th in the country. So 
We're watching Ohio State Michigan. I mean, we just are. How could we not? This is the big one. We're watching it. Winner basically goes to the national championship. Loser, hopes crushed once again. Michigan was able to win this last year and then go on to win it all. And it was in Ohio State last year, so that means it is going to be in Michigan this year, I believe, anyway. So here we go. Two evenly matched teams. Michigan actually has the number one offense. Ohio State has the fifth. But look at their yards, fourth and fifth, passing, rushing, both a little more run heavy than pass heavy, honestly. So it looks like Ohio State actually has a significantly better defense. So we will see if that uh, holds true. Some big prospects in visiting as well. There's the injuries, so nothing too crazy there. So, wow, here we go in Michigan. Michigan, Ohio State in the big house, number one and two in the country. These two have been basically the best teams in the, in the sim for the last three, four years. Consistently, it's Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan, Ohio State. Going for the same recruits, going for the same players. It is just back and forth, so here we go. Okay, we're gonna go to the end of the first quarter here. Okay, 7-7, seven, seven, close game, we're gonna go to halftime. 17-7, seven, seven. so Ohio State's actually kind of taking it to a Michigan's gotta answer, they just do, okay. Gonna go next change of possession here. Ohio State goes down and answers. We're gonna go next change of possession again. Intercepted. Okay, change of possession, but they stopped them. The field goal is no good. So, okay, we're gonna go a little slower here now. Okay, huge play, huge play. Okay, we're inside. So here we go, Michigan is down 10, I believe. Yeah, 10 with, you know, start of the quarter here. Um, hand, oh, read option. They got this fast QB on the edge. Brown, he's down. That might be a touchdown. He rolls in. Cameron Brown. Every time we watch this guy, he's an absolute freak show for Michigan. That is a huge gain. Okay, we're going to let Ohio State's drive go a little bit here. If they start to get down inside like the 30, we're going to watch. And they're running the ball, running the ball. 10-yard penalty, though, and they're going to have to punt this football no stafford intercepted sorry okay yeah now first down michigan michigan driving here we go okay we're gonna watch from here so michigan they were down 10 at the start of the quarter pick off stafford down three here they got brown they got ingram in the backfield little read option that's actually not ingram that's their backup who's very good as well Wow, Samuel Simmons, there we go. Michigan is trying to break Ohio State's heart again. Jeez, Stafford throws the interception. Could have put up two scores and basically iced it, but here it is, Michigan driving. All the pressure on Ohio State here. Cam Brown is gonna pull it, get a huge gain inside the 10 yard line. Oh my goodness, Cameron Brown. This is crazy. Michigan driving all over them. Incredible. Okay, shotgun split back look here. Michigan, Cam Brown, he looks a little tired here. He's going to tuck it and run again. Ohio State cannot stop him. He's down inside the five-yard line. Crazy. They cannot stop this Cam Brown. All of a sudden, second and two from the three-yard line. They got big personnel in defensively, big personnel offensively. Mark Ingram is still not in the game. He might have got injured. They're going to go to the fullback who gets stuffed. That is huge. Now it's third and two. If Ohio State stops them, you know, they have to kick a field goal. It's going to be a tie game, 3.30 left Ohio State football. So here we go. No Mark Ingram still. He must have got banged up. Cam Brown under center. Watch. Oh, he's in the flats. Oh, but he turned. Touchdown. Oh, my gosh. That's Kelsey. It looked like they had him stop, but Kelsey was able to get in. Kelsey from two yards out for Michigan. I didn't even want to watch extra point, but we are going to, wow, in the big house, Michigan comes up big. Back-to-back -back years coming down behind Ohio State, and Ohio State can't hold on. Okay, we're going to let this run a little bit. We're definitely going to watch second and nine, third and three. Big, okay, that was a huge gain. Stafford to Des Bryant, but we were here last year. Ohio State had a chance. They were down to about the 10 yard line with a minute left and they got stopped. So we'll see what Stafford can do. Triple option, Stafford has a ton of room. Oh my gosh, he just truck sticks someone. Matt Stafford, but he's injured. Oh no, Stafford. Oh no, Ohio State. 
Their QB gets hurt. Their fifth-year senior, senior, Matt Stafford. They have their backup in. They are going to have to, oh, my goodness, what a turn of events again. Andre Jones is stuffed. They are basically in the exact same spot as last year. There's an extra minute, but this is it. The Last year, they needed a touchdown. They got down to the 10-yard line, needed a touchdown to win. They could not. What is going to happen here? Oh, Stafford injured. That is tough. They have Des Bryant. They have, oh God, triple. Oh, that was, actually flipped it, but nothing there. Wow. I, I, I don't know if they feel comfortable throwing the ball with their backup. I'm not 100% sure what his overall is. I don't think it's like incredible. So here we go. Trips left. This looks like AJ Green soloed at the bottom of the screen. I might just go AJ one-on-one, -on -one, let him make a play. He's got a lot of time. Throws it. Oh my gosh, he's down inside the five. Inside the three. I think you got to go for this. Minute 25. You have three timeouts if you're Ohio State. You are going for it. Oh my goodness. In the big house. All comes down to this. Stafford injured. They got Des Bryant in motion. And they're going to hand the ball to Des Bryant. He's short. He's short. Oh my goodness. Des Bryant is short. About an inch short on the play. It looked like he could have just fallen in. Wow. Okay, Des. So, but you know, it's not over. Michigan has it up on there about one inch line. They need to be careful here. Ohio State does have three timeouts. Oh my goodness. What a stop. Counter has, a, oh, a huge gain actually. Picks up nine yards on the play. Ohio State is going to have to call a timeout. Ohio State needs a miracle or they are going to lose to Michigan once again up in the fourth quarter. Then, you know, need a drive at the 10 yard line and they get stuffed. Back to back years unless they can make something happen right here. Stretch, boom, and that is it. Michigan wins it again. Upsets Ohio State. Oh my gosh. That is it, Ohio, um, Ohio State goes down. Michigan Wolverines win it. This Cam Brown kid is a freak of nature. Look at this run, first play we watch of the game. Boom, bulls over four guys into the end zone to make the play. Cam Brown, I love this kid, Michigan. He could lead them to back-to-back -back national championships. Holy crap. All right, Michigan Wolverines, all-time classic game. Let's look at the stats from that one. Cam Brown actually didn't have a great game throwing the football, two interceptions. He was so good running the ball down the stretch though. Ingram didn't have a great game either. They didn't run the ball that great. They just made the plays when they had to. Kelsey with that late touchdown. We look at Ohio State, really could not throw the ball at all. This Aaron Jones, Andre Jones had a big game. Stafford ran the ball up. He got injured on that last drive. That might have cost him. Uh, yeah, Stafford honestly did not play that good. 156 yards, two interceptions. So Stafford kind of let down Ohio State. And that is going to kind of wrap up that era of Ohio State. Dez Stafford out of here. They still are going to be really good next year, but they don't have that really elite level quarterback. We will see. Wow. Okay. We are going to sim to conference championship weekend. Okay. We're going to look at recruiting again here. A lot of guys should be close to being wrapped up here now. Look at QBs. All of a sudden, Mariota is looking like he's going to end up at Tennessee. That would be an incredible get for Tennessee. Might get Bridgewater also. Georgia, maybe. Oh, uh, we knew Braxton already, and Johnny's going to Texas. That is massive for Texas. They're going to have Andrew Luck next year, and then they'll just have Johnny Manziel step in. Devontae Freeman, we knew that. Melvin Gordon, look at he's punches. All, everybody's super close there, so we don't even know. DeAnthony Thomas all of a sudden looking like UCF, maybe Tennessee. I think that was it for that. Wide receivers, Marquise Lee going to Texas. Big for them. Landry going to Texas. So Texas getting some big time players. Kelvin Benjamin going to Tennessee. Brandon Cooks going to Georgia. Odell Beckham, we knew that. And lastly, it was Penn State was looking like who was going to get our boy Sammy Watkins. And it's still looking like Penn State's got him on lock. Safarian Jenkins, we knew Notre Dame for the tackles. Robinson looking like AM now. Kuyan, I'm not going to say his name, going to Michigan. So that's a big get for Michigan. Um, if we go guard, no, we don't have any guards. We have DNs, Clowney, we already knew Notre Dame. Steven, Stephon Tuitt going to Ohio State. That's a good get for them. 
Uh, Phillips looking like Tennessee probably over Georgia. Jernigan looking like Florida or Georgia. Uh, middle linebacker looking like Shazier going to end up at Tennessee, maybe Georgia. Nothing for corners. And then free safety, Clinton Dix going to Florida. And Quandre looking like Mississippi State basically walked in. So that is what the recruiting class is looking like. We are now going to look at the top 25... Michigan, 11-1, Washington, North Carolina, Ohio State, Stanford. So a ton of 11-1 teams. I think Michigan's basically a lock as long as they win their um, championship game. Um, and then it'll just be kind of like, who will they play if they lose? I mean, I guess Ohio State could even get in it still. Auburn, Florida, two losses. There's North Carolina State. I mean, North Carolina's got to beat North Carolina State. I feel like if North Carolina State, or sorry, if North Carolina wins, they'll probably get in. The three ranked team, you know, they get this extra game. Yeah, it'll be interesting. So we are gonna sim through this, go to bowl season, see where we're at. Cam Newton wins the Heisman. So this is our first time ever, and Notre Dame wasn't even in the really in the title hunt, but this is the first time ever that one of our guys wins the Heisman. Cam Newton in his fifth year, fourth year, one of the biggest ever going to Notre Dame, like in our sim, like it was a huge get for them. So there we go. Oh my god, I just seen the natty. Is that for real? Oh no, okay, I thought it said Miss Minnesota, Michigan, but it's Washington. So UW makes it, there we go. UW has a decent team, like they're not star studded, but Tennessee, North Carolina, that's a good game. Minnesota's right there against Texas. Notre Dame, four losses, just could never put it together. Ohio State, one loss once again, playing one loss, Arizona. Just can't, this Michigan team just has their number. Crazy, so we are gonna watch, I wanna look at quickly at the uh, Washington roster. Obviously, once again, I'm gonna say Michigan has the better roster or right off rip, but I know they have got some big recruits. They got Kellen Moore. Okay, I was gonna say Taylor Mays was the other one I remember, but he isn't even there anymore. So, hey, this is gonna be Kellen Moore's show. Only a junior. He's gonna probably be a 99 if he comes next back next year. Really good quarterback for Washington, and he's trying to lead UW to kind of a surprise national championship. But you know what? We've seen crazier things happen, and if he's not able to, that is going to be back to back chips for Michigan, which would be uh, pretty incredible. Kind of trying to put a stranglehold on this sim. I'd say them and Ohio State now have been the two best teams. I think they each have one natty. Michigan is trying to be, I'm gonna look just at my notes here, but I'm trying, uh, I'm thinking if Michigan wins this, they'll be, they'll be the first team with two. Ohio State won in 05, Texas, South Carolina. Yeah, this would be the only team with two. Ohio State hasn't even made two actually. So Michigan, this is gonna be their third um, national championship game in a row. They lost to Baylor, no, sorry. They lost to Arkansas, beat Florida State. So. This is quite the run for this uh, Michigan team. We'll see if they can close it off. All right, so here's where the numbers sit. Michigan, the number one team in the country. My, uh, Washington has a slightly better defense, but they might be playing slightly different levels of teams. Obviously, Michigan has a pretty, um, pretty big talent gap. Let's be honest, uh, Kellen Moore, you, you got to put on a show here for UW and steal this one. Otherwise, Michigan is going to go on the best easily. They're already on the best three-year run we've seen in this sim, but they will completely lock it down and it'll be tough for anybody else to match it. So we're going to go to the end of the quarter here. Seven, nothing Michigan, but they are drive. No, Washington stops them. Okay, so we're going to go to halftime. Okay, that quarter was all Michigan, 28-7. Now Washington's got to do something here or it is going to be a wrap. Yeah, so that is going to be it. 49-14. I actually simmed through that last quarter pretty quick, but kind of a laugher. Oh no, sorry. That is, the, I got confused there. We are still in the fourth quarter, but it is basically over. 49 14 we are just going to go to the end of the game here 52 14 yeah michigan was too much for uh for university of washington to handle i'm really excited for the new game where that playoff is all built in we would have seen you know better matchups in these big games here at the end but cameron brown i have got to say this guy's got to be the best player that we've had in this whole run of college football in my opinion led them to back-to-back -back national championships 430 yards he can run the football as well. I want to look at his final stats for the year, but look at this. Like, they just don't even have huge, they have good tight ends. They don't have crazy weapons other than that, but just too much for Washington. 
absolutely blows their doors off and that is it michigan back to back and third straight national championship game so there it is michigan wins add it to the trophy case add to user sure okay we are going to simulate now to the end of bowl season okay we are going to look final top 25 and it's going to be michigan on top probably ohio state too yeah honestly it should have just been a rematch of them in the natty tennessee north carolina washington west virginia usc four losses too much notre dame four losses too too, too much okay let's look at the all-americans uh mckinney actually this guy from florida first team all-american over cam and over the michigan qb and cam won the heisman Tyrion smith was new ski patrick peterson and janoris jenkins the two corners there we go second team cam travis kelsey and matt khalil and then another uh, Michigan, Zach Martin and Barrett Jones. So Michigan, Ohio State, just everywhere, especially in offense. Uh, yeah, that's where we sit. Let's look at freshmen, Blake Bortles for OU, DeAndre Hopkins for South Carolina, Robert Woods for Florida, Brandon Scherr for Wisconsin, Jake Matthews for USC, Aaron Donald for Auburn, of course, um, CJ Mosley for Michigan, D. Milner for Florida. Yeah, there we go. So pretty good uh, All-American teams. We are going to now look through the season stats quickly. I don't want to go too, too long here, but we're going to take a look. Okay, we have McKinney, Tyrod um, leading the nation in passing right there. So that's actually good. Tyrod as a senior right there. Here's that Cam Brown, really good year. Passing touchdowns, Jimmy Clausen first. Where's Cam? Cam, I wanna look at Cam's final stats here. 2,900 yards, 33 touchdowns. 170 QB ratings good and 800 yeah so he finally had that big time year we were looking from Cam Newton yeah it took it took three years but he was able to finally do it okay rushing haven't still haven't had that guy on that team where he's just getting all the care he's putting up these huge huge stats um rushing touchdowns Mark Ingram right there but you see he's kind of splitting carries he only gets 1200 yards where this King guy gets 100 more carries so just kind of how it has worked. Receiving yards, Michael Floyd right there for Notre Dame. Tavon Austin right there for Navy. Okay, we can look defensively, see if we have any tackle leaders. Not really. Tackles for loss. Not really. QB sacks, wow, this Raymond Bush guy had a good year. Uh, none of our guys really. INTs, Patrick Peterson, six interceptions on the year. So he was great for Tennessee. Oh, that is kind of the big standout one there. Okay, now we're gonna look at just, uh, we'll go some of the big teams we wanna take a look at here. Florida, who did they have? This McKinney had a great year for them. Yeah, I think he ran the ball any route. Yeah, okay, so this guy was a freaking freak show for Florida, absolute freak show. Um, Florida State, no, Georgia just hasn't, they, Georgia has not had the QB, and that's what I'm starting to, I'm a little worried about for teams like uh, Ohio State and USC this year, they're losing their QBs, if they don't bring in one, they're going to be kind of stuck, like Georgia has been, and then they don't get the recruiting classes, and then all of a sudden you fall off a map, Barkley, good overall, you actually did not have a very good year for them, um, numbers wise here's Michigan Ingram and Simmons basically just split it right down the middle but Ingram is back next year Cam Brown rushed for 800 yards but he is gone uh, receiver Travis Kelsey was their leading receiver nine touchdowns on the year as well Notre Dame where are you uh, 1200 yards 500 for Trent Richardson right there 1300 yards Monty Ball right behind him Cam Newton like they were so loaded this was their year not able to get it done Stafford honestly did not have the best year I don't know if they've like changed their score coach or something but they are so run heavy right now at Ohio State um they had Stafford AJ Green and Des Bryant and they're really not throwing the ball which uh, I don't really love I would have liked to see them air it out a little bit but that is uh that's where we're at right now I want to look at Tennessee um they've had some really good players really good recruiting classes Russell Russell is not good, just straight up not good. And this guy was just better, 125 rated, geez. Okay, so he was just not very good over his time at Tennessee. Uh, I think a lot of this is playbooks and stuff sometimes, but uh, there you go. Here we got Texas, how did Andrew Luck do? 142 
good QB rating. He's going to be back for his senior year next year. Should be basically the best team in our best quarterback in the country. Go to SC. Clawson had a good year, 2,900 yards, 35 touchdowns is pretty good. This uh, Kevin Newton had a really good year running the ball. Andre Johnson in behind him receiving. Right here, Alshon is a sophomore, second leading receiver. You will take that. So that's kind of where we're sitting there, guys. That is gonna wrap up this, what is this, 2010 season. We are gonna go just finally to National Signing Day, look at the final recruits, see where they ended up, look at the top five recruiting classes, and then we are gonna be getting into the next season. All right, National Signing Day, we are here. Um, let's go through it. Marcus Mariota ends up at USC. That is massive for SC. I was getting a little worried for them. He probably will start for them. Teddy Bridgewater ends up at Georgia. So Tennessee misses out on these two five-star QBs just narrowly. They do get this guy though, the third rank QB. So Texas getting Johnny Manziel. He's going to sit for a year and then step in. So that's really big for those three teams. So Michigan gets Devontae Freeman and Melvin Gordon just over Notre Dame. That is huge. DeAnthony Thomas ends up at UCF. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. What do you want? The two best running backs in the class. One, two punch. Sure. Marquise Lee going to Texas. That's huge. Uh, Jarvis Landry, Texas. So two five-star receivers there. Calvin Benjamin going to Tennessee. Brandon Cooks, Georgia. Odell Beckham. And then I think we already knew Sammy Watkins was going to end up at Penn State. Mississippi State. Spurs Penn State. There we go. Mississippi State. Um, we knew Safarian Jenkins was going to Notre Dame. Uh, Robinson A&M. Michigan. There we go. Get the big tackle. Big for them. Clowney, Notre Dame, to it. We knew that. Tennessee gets Jordan Phillips. Florida gets Timmy Jernigan. Georgia gets Ryan Shazier. And then Clinton Dix, Florida. Mississippi State gets Quandre Diggs. So no one off the top really stuck out as, as having an incredible class to me. Some solid ones, but nothing was like, oh my goodness, crazy, mind blowing. So North Carolina, number one class. Like, yeah, if you look at the five stars, like, who had the most was Georgia had three. So there was nobody who just like kind of took over. Like last year, USC had eight five stars. Eight, which is absolutely insane. Oh, I didn't even mark that down. Crap. Yeah, it was last year though. And the year before Ohio State had like six. So Texas, Ohio State, Michigan, Miami. So that's it. USC just on the outside looking in. So none of these teams had an amazing recruiting class this year, but you know, some solid ones really gonna help some teams. So that is gonna be it, guys. I'm gonna make the next recruiting class. We're gonna keep rocking. All right, boys, here we go. Now, it's been about a day and a half since I've last recorded. So far, we are at the 2011 season. I've already been recording this. I think my, I did the first one a week ago. So it's already taken me over a week to record all these making all these rosters, making all the recruiting classes. It takes a ton of time, but I'm really happy with how this has went so far. So yeah, this is only 2011, 2012 um, recruiting class and Michigan is back to back national champions. I do, like I kind of mentioned at the end of the last year, I do think this is gonna be kind of a, a bit of a movement year. I think we could finally see Michigan, Ohio State, USC. Maybe some new teams can come to the top. Those three have been the best teams in the sim in my opinion, so we will see. Now, getting into this recruiting class, this is a good, the 2011, it's a good, I would not say great recruiting class, but it's it's very balanced. We have really good players kind of just sprinkled throughout. There is no real duds anywhere talent at basically every position maybe not the high high level but guys i've been just going through writing out some other recruiting classes some of the recruiting classes coming up are about to be absolutely insane okay the number one quarterback by far with a bullet in this class is going to be Jameis winston now he obviously went to florida state he is actually from the state of alabama in real life so alabama auburn florida south alabama so good chance he might stay home then if we go running back we have tj yeldon from alabama Alabama. He went to Alabama in real life. He's leading Ohio State, Tennessee, Michigan, SC. Uh, Kenyon Drake. He went to Alabama in real life. He's going Georgia, Georgia Tech, Alabama, Tennessee, and then Todd Gurley. This is the best, best running back recruit in the class. He's from North Carolina. He went to Georgia. He's leaning Georgia, 
either of the Carolina schools, Tennessee, Vandy. So staying in that kind of part of the country, that is our running backs. Then we go wide receivers. Amari Cooper is debatably the best in the class. He went to Alabama in real life. Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn will miss. Then we have Sterling Shepard, who's from Oklahoma, went to Oklahoma in real life. Oklahoma is his number one. I believe it's been, I think they got Blake Bortles. They got one of the good, they got a really good QB recruit last year. So um, Sterling Shepard would be a good get for them. Then we have Stephon Diggs, who went to Maryland in real life. He is from Maryland. Here he's leading Penn State, West Virginia, Navy, Ohio State, Notre Dame. And then last is Doriel Green Beckham. Now, this guy never really made it to the NFL, but he's one of the highest ranked receiver recruits of all time. He went to Missouri, got kicked off the team, but absolute freak. 6'5", 240. He's got Tennessee, Nebraska, OU, and Notre Dame on his list. Uh, tight end, I don't think we have any tight ends, but we have some tackles. We have DJ Humphreys, Ohio State, Texas, Bama, Florida. We have Taylor Decker, Ohio State, SC, Texas, Florida State. Ronnie Stanley, who went to Notre Dame in real life. He's leaning Notre Dame, Ohio State, Michigan, SC. So he's probably actually the best overall tackle in the class though he is a four star we do have one guard prospect this guy never was big made it really in the nfl but he was a really high level guard prospect i believe he went to stanford in real life he's uh going notre dame bama tennessee and florida no centers if we go on to d ends though we have a few so we got deforest buckner he is from hawaii i didn't even know that i, I don't know if he maybe moved to the man mainland later in life but whatever he went to oregon in real life we got tennessee florida washington michigan ohio state usc um, uh, the next one, Mario Edwards, one of the highest ranked recruits coming out of high school. Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Alabama. We actually have three really stud D tackles. So we have Leonard Williams, went to USC in real life, uh, going Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, SC, Texas. Eddie Goldman, he went to Florida State, Vautech, West Virginia, North Carolina, LSU. And then Eric Armstead from California. He's leaning SC, LSU, Cal, UCLA. Looks like he's going to stay home, but he did end up in Oregon in real life. Okay, I do believe we have an outside linebacker. Maybe I made him a middle. No, I definitely made him an outside. Maybe I made him a middle. Maybe I didn't make him. So there should be Leonard Floyd, unless I'm just... Maybe I accidentally deleted him or something. I don't think he's a three-star. Okay, I'm not sure where Leonard Floyd is. Uh, he was supposed to be here at outside linebacker, but I might have accidentally got rid of him. Uh, we also have Shaq Thompson who went to Washington in real life. He's going South Carolina, Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Arkansas. Reggie Le Raglin from Alabama went to Alabama. He's leading Auburn, Bama, Florida, Tennessee. So I don't know where Leonard Floyd went. I must have, either I'm just somehow missing his name or accidentally deleted him. We have one corner. It's Ronald Darby. He was going Tennessee, Auburn, Cal, UC, UCLA. And I believe we only have one safety it is strong safety landing collins who went to alabama in real life he's going notre dame bama tennessee georgia Auburn. so that is the recruiting class for this year guys so not the best i would say but definitely a good one okay now we're going to sim to the regular season here and then i got to look at the rosters i gotta look at the top 25 it's been like a day and a half where i've been in here i know michigan won ohio state lost a few guys a lot of qbs left without really good backup so i definitely think this could be a year with a bit of turnover all right so let's go look at the top 25 i'd, I'd be shocked if Michigan's not number one. Back-to-back -back national champions have made three stary. They're 97 overall. Ohio State is still up there at 99 overall. North Carolina, Bama's 93. Notre Dame's at 95, so they should be in the running. USC has, you know, a really good team once again. Uh, Florida, Auburn, Texas is going to be right there. I want to go look at Auburn because they've been getting some really good recruits. So I want to make sure we look at them. Is there any other teams? Minnesota actually has got some really good recruits. They could low-key be making noise. West Virginia is a 93. Georgia, Florida State, Mississippi State. What's my army team? My army team somehow is an 86 overall. Okay, let's look at the Heisman watch. You see, so no. Mark Ingram right there. Senior at Michigan trying to go with three peak. That would be crazy. Three national champions in a row. Okay, Kellen Moore, Washington, first team All-American. Michael Floyd at Notre Dame, first team. DeAndre Hopkins, only a sophomore and he's a second team All-American. Travis Kelsey is a senior, going to be a freak. Tyron Smith, Matt Khalil, uh, Zach Martin. Oh, yeah, we have some guys this year, especially on offense. Uh, defensively, Patrick Peterson going to be a senior for Tennessee. There we go. Let's look at second team. No, for QB. Tavon Austin at Navy. How's he done? Uh, a thousand yards. So last year, so pretty good. Chan
Lance Warmack right there. Barrett Jones, Ohio State's O-line is disgusting. Uh, Mo Claiborne for Michigan, 94. I think he's only a sophomore, maybe a junior. So that is where we sit with the All-American teams. Let's go through some of these rosters and look at some of these teams. I always like to just take a peek at Alabama. But like they just they've never got the recruits. So maybe they'll pick it up eventually, but not yet. Okay, so at Auburn, I think, could be sneaky this year. They have a senior quarterback. They have a bunch of quarterbacks. Yeah, and then they have Ta Taj Boyd, only a sophomore. So they'll have him for two years. So next few years are gonna have really good. They have a good running back this year, two good receivers. One of them's only a junior. Um, they have Aaron Donald, only a sophomore. DJ Fluker. Uh, this team could low-key make some noise. They, they're they not super, super deep, but they have some super high-level talent. I, I would look out for Auburn, you know, to make some noise. Clemson, Stephon Gilmore, you know, they just have not been getting those recruiting classes. Florida, Khalil Mack, this Ralph looks good. Um, Drake Kirkpatrick, Jarvis Jones, good players, but uh, yeah, not enough, I don't think. Same with Florida State. Same with Georgia. Georgia's got a decent team, but uh, yeah, no, I don't think it's gonna be their year. Keep going down, LSU. Good players, but nothing nothing to write home about. Miami, same thing. Mike Williams, Matt Barkley, only a junior. Uh, they could be a decent team, but I don't think they're going to do it. Okay, let's look at Michigan. So they got three 99s really leading the charge and a 98. So they have four seniors right here who are absolute just beasts. They have another senior. Like, they are not going to have the quarterback. That's their big thing. They This Courtney Mobley is even their only underclassman they really have. They went from having one of the best QBs in the country to a big question mark. They are going to obviously be able to run the ball. Then they got Melvin Gordon and Devontae Freeman coming in as well. So they'll have Mark Ingram this year, though, this guy next year, and then they'll have Melvin Gordon and Devontae Freeman for two years. They'll be good. They have Matt Parker and Randall Parker, the Parker brothers at uh, wide receiver. They have a junior there, you know, some, a good freshman here. Uh, good pass catchers. Obviously, they have Travis Kelsey, who's about as good as it comes. Kyle Rudolph is your backup tight end. Matt Khalil, look at that. Just like this team is loaded offensively once again, but they are missing that quarterback. And if they lose this year, I think that will be the reason why. They have a good defensive end, Mo Claiborne, like they are super deep throughout but that QB is going to be a huge question mark but I think that's going to be the way with a lot of these teams if we go to Notre Dame they have a bunch of high 90s once again they do they have this Roy Odom who's stepping in for um, Cam Newton so they have a 97 overall senior quarterback they have this Shelton Allen guy and this Steve Harley coming up so honestly this Harley could be good in a few years so they're actually set up pretty well at the QB position they have a jun two junior just studs in Ball and Richardson a lot of juniors they haven't recruited the next next guy yet like michigan did but they have time michael floyd might be the best wide receiver in the country have some other guys in behind him once again though haven't got that superstar like freshman coming up but Munoz senior nasty another senior and a good freshman they just got austin safari and jenkins waiting in the wings as well so notre dame always seems to kind of not shit the bed, but underperformed. Not great. Horrible secondary. Oh my god. So, secondary, not great. Linebackers, decent. Um, they have two good ones. Okay along the D-line. Just okay. They have Jadavon Clown, who's probably their best D-lineman as a true freshman. So, they're going to need him to make some plays. Michigan looks better than them to me. Okay, then we go Ohio State. Now, they lost Stafford. They have this Greg Woods senior. He's going to be good for them this year. Then they have nothing. They don't have that guy waiting in the wing. So they need... And there's only really Jameis Winston this year. So there's going to be a few teams that are really going to want him. They have this Andre Jones really good, but they haven't got that stud recruit either. They're going to have this Jonathan Hall next year, so that gives them a two-year window. Then same thing at wide receiver. They have A.J. Green as a senior. They have this guy as a junior who's okay. They don't have that superstar coming up, though. So this is starting to feel like not the end of an era, but maybe a little bit for Ohio State. They had such good recruiting classes for so long. It feels like they have a ton of talent this year, a ton of talent last year, and then, you know, they're going to be losing some big, big players here. So it will be very interesting. They got two it along the D-line, not a good DN. They have Sheldon Richardson and this Eugene Jennings, two absolute studs in the middle. Uh, I believe they have Keekly. Yeah, they have Keekly and Alec Ogletree behind him. So there, they're good. Two good corners, better than Notre Dame's, and a good safety. So 
they're in a really good position. This feels like this is a year they kind of got to finally get it done. Uh, OU hasn't been able to do much. Penn State, uh, decent. This guy's good, Rob Barnett. Good seniors, could could make some noise. Uh, Stanford, Syracuse, Temple, Tennessee. Patrick Peterson, 99 running back, but not a ton else. Texas, Andrew Luck as a senior, and 99 Terrell Pryor as a senior. I really wish Whip Pryor would've went somewhere else. And then they got Johnny Manziel, so that's a huge get for them. Uh, two good running backs, not great though. Wide receiver, okay. Oh, they got Jarvis Landry actually, he's a freshman and Marquise Lee, so they're gonna be totally fine. They don't have a stud right now, but they're gonna be all good. Uh, not a lot at tight end right now. They haven't recruited on the O-line, like Michigan and Ohio State and Notre Dame too, but especially Michigan and Ohio State have been getting just the O lines. Oh, they got this Larry Tate guy, not one of our guys. Okay, so they have a couple of bookends, not great in the middle. Hawkins looks good. Middle linebacker is good. Yeah, this team's gonna be, you know, right there, right there. I still think Michigan, Ohio State are the two best teams, but uh, yeah, oh God, their safeties could use some work. But Texas, right there and usc big center good punter so they were a really high overall but just looking at them they don't look quite the marcus mariota that was a huge get for them i forgot about that what a get he's gonna start for four years for them they have good running backs don't have that stud waiting in the wings of this guy oh my god connor ford freshman i take that back not one of our guys but looks like an actual stud Ah, uh, they got alshon jeffrey only as a junior keenan allen as allen as a sophomore justin hunter okay so so they, I think, are a year or two away, but this is the type of offense in two years when they have Keenan Allen, Hunter, Alshon Jeffrey is a senior-ish, Marcus Mariota. They could be really, really good. So they have nothing at tight end. Um, Central Henderson, only a sophomore. Two really good centers. Three good centers, actually. Lionel Brown. Jake Matthews, only a sophomore. So they have two good young bookend tackles. Eric Davis, uh, okay, D tackle. Sharif Floyd, only a sophomore. That's huge on the inside. I believe they got a good middle linebacker. Drew Brake. Okay. Manti Teo. He's a junior, though, so I don't even know if he's going to start, actually, this year. Anthony Barr is a sophomore. That's a big pickup. Two good corners. One of them, underclassmen. Two white boys, but hey, that'll do. Eric Reed only a sophomore. That's huge. This Chris Banks only a sophomore too. And then this Stanley only a junior. So I, I think USC might be a year away, but they're gonna be they're gonna be tough. Okay, gonna quickly look at just the best players in the country. Uh QB, Terrell Pryor, Andrew Luck. I wonder who's gonna end up starting. Helen Moore, EJ Manuel at Western Kentucky. Forgot about him. Ryan Mallett. So we have Blaine Gabbert, Roy Odom. We have a ton of good QBs this year. Running back, similar. Um, only one of them is ours with Mark Ingram. Oh, LaMichael James right there at a 98 overall. Eddie Lacy, where did Lacy go? Mississippi State or? No, uh, Minnesota, right there, junior, cool. Wide receiver, we have Julio Jones, best in the country. Only 900 yards last year. What a mistake going to Boise State, but. Michael Floyd right here, he had 1,200 yards last year. AJ Green, not a huge production last year, but Marvin Jones, Justin Blackman at Minnesota. Tavon Austin, so we have a ton of receiver talent up near the top. Younger guys with Alshon and uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Tight end is Travis Kelsey with a bullet. Absolute freak. This Munoz is good. Irvin, Kyle Rudolph, but I mean, this is Travis Kelsey's world. Tyrion Smith and Matt Khalil, Ohio State, Michigan, the two best left tackles, and then they have this third best left tackle as well. Guards, Hutchinson, yeah, then they have the best left guard in between Michigan and Ohio State. Best center at Ohio State. Does Michigan have one? No. And then it's USC guy. Yep. Uh, right guard, Ohio State, best in the country. Like Ohio, and, and the fourth best. So like Ohio State, and they have the best right tackle. So I don't know if we'll ever see an O-line as good as this Ohio State O-line. It is absolutely just loaded 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 Khalil Mack only a junior and 99 overall Courtney Upshaw wow Khalil let's see what Khalil can do this year five and a half sacks last year D tackle Fletcher Cox at Mississippi State best D tackle in the country along with Andrew Williams uh, Sheldon Richardson Aaron Donald right there only a sophomore don't think we'll have any uh, left outsides middles Arthur Brown Luke Keekley junior one of the best in the country right outside I don't think we'll have any um, corners Patrick Peterson best in the country Stefan Gilmore second, Mo Claiborne, so a few of our guys right up at the top right there. 
Free safety is Will Hill. Uh, Tyran Matthew right there at um, UTEP. Only a sophomore right now. Strong safety, these two Mullins guys. Uh, none of our guys, it doesn't look like. So those are all the best team players in the country, guys. Those are the really good rosters. We are gonna sim to week nine, take a look at where everything is at. All right, so here we are in week nine. We are gonna go look at the recruiting trail, see how it is looking. So. QB Jameis Winston, Florida, looking like they have the early track. That would be absolutely massive for them. Bam and Auburn in the running. If we go running back, TJ Yeldon is really looking hard at USC. Ohio State is on the outside looking in. Those look like his top two. Kenyon Drake looking like Georgia has a pretty commanding lead for him. Then Todd Gurley, Old Dominion or Tennessee? Definitely go to Tennessee, Todd Gurley. Please don't go to Old Dominion. Amari Cooper looking like Florida or UTSA. If Florida gets Jameis and Amari, that could be massive. Sterling Shepard gonna go to OU. I don't mind that stuff. Fawn Diggs going to Notre Dame. What a pickup for the Notre Dame fight in Irish. Doriel Green Beckham going to Tennessee. That would be huge. If Tennessee could get Beckham and uh, Gurley, that could really set them up well. If we look at tackles, DJ Humphrey looking like Texas, Virginia in the running, but Ohio State in the lead. Taylor Decker, Ohio State does not miss on the O-line. My goodness, and who is the other guy? Ronnie Stanley in it, Michigan. So Mi Michigan, Ohio State, they get O-linemen. That is what they do. Jeez. Okay, then we got our guard, and he's going to Notre Dame, the other team that gets all the O-linemen. So makes sense. I like all those fits. Okay, DeForest Buckner might go to Tennessee, Florida right there, Washington. So that's too close to call. There's a bunch of teams right there. Uh, Mario Edwards looking like Ole Miss, Vandy, Mississippi State. I think that was it for DNs. D tackles Leonard Williams going to the Ohio State. That is massive. Eddie Goldman looking like North Carolina, maybe West Virginia. Eric Armstead. So USC, you think they really be pushing hard for him but it's looking like Oregon State or UCLA maybe Stanford outside linebacker so I still don't see my guy did I really did I accidentally just like exit out of him or something I don't know it's weird or like somehow am I missing him did I like spell his name wrong yeah I don't know I was supposed to have Leonard Floyd can't find him I don't know what happened Shaq Thompson AM North Texas South Carolina Reggie Raglan might go to Florida so Florida could have a very very good recruiting class coming in Ronald Darby looking like Oregon Tennessee or Auburn don't see many five stars going to Oregon so that'd be a big get for them strong safety Landon Collins going to Notre Dame so Notre Dame looking very good early there we go Okay, now we're going to look at the top 25 here. First, Ohio State 6-0, Auburn 7-0. I did say Auburn had a sneaky good team this year. Penn State, Arizona, Notre Dame, Army. So Michigan has lost a game. Notre Dame, Tennessee, Florida. Okay, obviously it's going to be very tempting to just go watch friggin' Michigan, Ohio State for the third year in a row. I don't know if you guys would be upset at that. 15 USC. Okay, let's sim to week 14 again. We could watch Notre Dame and USC or we could watch Michigan, Ohio State again. I mean, they're the two best teams basically every freaking year. But then if we want to, if Notre Dame and USC are both doing well, we could check out that game as well. So we're going to do that. All right, so here we are in week 14. Let's Let's look at the top 25 again. Yeah, Michigan, it's just hard not to watch this game. 10 and 1 versus 11 and 0. And it's just like, once again, the winner is going to make the national championship game. I hope it's not against Arizona, but Stanford, Georgia, Notre Dame. Okay, so Notre Dame, USC, they're 9 and 2 and 8 and 3, but I don't know. It's just tough not to watch that game, boys. I don't know if people are gonna be upset that I keep watching, but if they keep having this game and a national championship appearance is on the line, we gotta watch it. They always have the best players from our recruiting classes. They've been just absolute classics every every year. So I think we gotta watch it once again. Okay, so here we go. We are gonna see if Ohio State can get the monkey off their back and finally beat Michigan in this game. Ohio State has the much better offense this year. Five points more per game, you know, 27 more yards, way better defensively too. If they're gonna get it done, guys, this Ohio State needs to do it. Otherwise, Michigan, if they, Michigan wins this, they're one game away from booking their fourth straight national championship game appearance and a chance to win three in a row. So the stakes in this are about as big as they can get. We will see. 
who knows? Ohio State, I think, has debatably had the better team every year the last three years, and Michigan has won this game. So who knows? Okay, we're gonna sim through the first quarter. Okay, that is not what Ohio State wants. They are down 14 nothing. But Ohio State has a great second quarter. They got 17 unanswered. They're up 17-14. or 24-14. So there it is, 24-14. Michigan has it at about midfield. I want to just see who had the ball. So we'll watch one play here, then I'm going to simulate a little bit here. But once again, every year Michigan's down in the at the start of the fourth and they get this crazy comeback too and Ohio State ain't, isn't able to hold on. So I don't know. I'm not putting anything to bed yet. We are going to sim a little bit ahead. Sim play, huge play for Parker, Ingram. Ingram again, incomplete. 23 yard touchdown run for Mark Ingram. So Michigan will not go away. Ohio State up three. Let's see if they can get a drive going. Hall, Hall, Irvin, Hall, Hall, Irvin. Okay, they are driving here. So once again, they don't have Stafford anymore. They have a different QB, but he's pretty good. They still have AJ Green. They have maybe the best O-line college football has ever seen. Like every starter is above like a 96. So crazy a little speed option the QB's gonna be able to like, keep it nice little stiff arm gets out there gains five i want to just sim seven yards okay here we go down at about the 12 yard line here for ohio state if they're able to get a touchdown i don't want to say it's over but it's pretty close field goal and this is all up in the air okay a little play action dot in the back corner aj green maybe the best receiver in the country toe tap at the back of the end zone and they are gonna go up 10 that is mad of Michigan is in such a tough spot now three minutes left huge play there dropped first and goal we're gonna watch here 241 Michigan with an incredible drive once again they just don't stop what a rivalry here we go handoff this is not Mark Ingram this is their backup though and he's really good he get oh no that is Mark Ingram so he gets stuffed there Mark but uh new career much rushing record so probably the best running back in this history of Michigan four-year starter friggin won two national championships already has another appearance uh, trying to get to another one here but we will see so Michigan needs to score a touchdown here Ohio State obviously needs to stop them Q oh big stick that might have been Luke Keekley met Mark Ingram in the hole and absolutely stuck him okay third and goal the clock is ticking Michigan does have three timeouts they want to keep those Ingram in the backfield he is a little gassed though you can see this might be Travis Kelsey time if you want to get crazy yep drops back hits him on the slant Randall Parker there it is Michigan refuses to go away they just refuse onside kick recovered by Ohio State so here we go three timeouts for Michigan so they do need a bit of a you know it's this is still Ohio State's game to lose obviously Michigan needs to make a play on this running back that's a little bit bigger of a gain than you would have liked if you're Michigan there but you do have three timeouts. They're going to be able to stop the clock every time as long as they don't get a first down. But if Ohio State gets a first down now, this game is over, wrapped up. Okay, pistol action. Little handoff, keeping it with the QB. And he's, that's it. He doesn't fumble. Greg Woods uses his legs and that should do it. Michigan is only going to have one timeout and Ohio State finally does it. Oh, fumble. Okay. I was about to say Ohio State finally does it and they just fumble the ball. Michigan recovers. Ohio State somehow coughs it up. Michigan football, a chance to go tie it or win it. QB drops back, drops it in underneath. Uh, this is not what Michigan is built for. Is this like two minute offense? They're a run heavy, you know, Kelsey, Rudolph, Mark Ingram. They got to spike it here. So it's all of a sudden third and six. That's not what you want. But we have Ingram, we got Kelsey, we got Rudolph for our guys. Not one of our QBs for uh, Michigan right now. Okay, drops back. Little flat route to Travis Kelsey. And he's going to get the first down. The clock will stop until they move the change. That is massive for Travis Kelsey huge huge play for Michigan they only need field goal to tie it and send this baby to overtime so 
This is still anybody's game. QB drops back. Ton of time goes to Mark Ingram, but that's a huge play, huge knockout over the middle of the field. Michigan still has a timeout, but they're, they're, they're starting to feel the clock here. This is not what they're built for. They're not explosive come from behind. They want to grind you out, but they do have athletes. This is far from over. Okay, QB drops back. Going to tuck it and run. He's got a blocker out in front. He didn't really use him that well, but seven yard gain, third and three. Clock is running though. They're probably going to hurry to the line here. Do not spike it. No, they're not going to, thankfully. We got a split back look here. I don't know if Kelsey's even on the field, which you don't love, but oh, a little drop off to the full. That is a stick there. I think that was Keekly once again, but hey, that is a first down. 37 seconds. They still have a timeout. I don't know what their field goal kicker is like. I don't know how good he is, but we will see. Michigan trying to come back. Again, huge slant over the middle, and that's probably right all close to field goal range. Ohio State. Oh my goodness, if they blow this one, this will be absolutely crushing for the Buckeyes. What was that? Was that a false start or an offside? False start. Ooh, Michigan. Every friggin' yard counts right now. It's a college kicker. Ooh, that is massive. Oh, I don't know why. Sometimes there's this glitch where we can't see it. It should be second and 15 now, or first and 15. 27 seconds left, Michigan. Football, one timeout. He's going to tuck it and run once again. He's got a ton of room. That is a great shoestring tackle. It looked like he could have ran for another 10 yards there. 17. Oh, God. They might. Are they going to spike it? Yep. They're going to spike it with 11, 10. Okay. They are going to spike it. There's nine seconds. Are they going to try to run a play? They still have a timeout. So you'd think a one play. What is it? Actually, this might be fourth down. I can't even see what down it is. No. Okay. Yeah. This is third. So they have a play. They can call a timeout. Try to get this just a little. Oh, they're going to screen pass. He gets sacked. Oh my God. That is the, that's Luke Keekly. 10 tackles gets that sack. That was the worst possible thing for Michigan. And now it's got to be a Hail Mary. Wow. That is soul crushing. The only thing you could not do is take a sack there. They do. They're going to throw it up. Oh, it gets picked off. I'm like, that looks like it got caught. Interception. That is, they actually counted that as a safety. Oh my God. So if it was a two point game, but there it is, Ohio State wins it. Finally gets the monkey off their back. AJ Green in the back corner of the end zone. Luke Keekley with the sack, hangs on an interception on the Hail Mary. Michigan had made three straight national championship games. They are not going to make it this year, though. That'll be two losses for them. Um, that is going to basically knock them out. Walker actually played pretty well overall. Ingram had a really good day. Walker added another 37 yards. Matt Parker was their big uh, big guy there. Roderick Avery, if you go to Ohio State. AJ Green, not a ton, but got that big catch at the end. Jones had a good day. The QB ran for 78 yards. And, you know, he, he was efficient when he needed to be. So, that is it. Ohio State finally gets the monkey off their back. Knocks off their arch rival, Michigan. They still have to win the conference championship game to make it though, but they, they put themselves in a great spot. Wow, that was crazy. Okay, before we get into that, I want to look at recruiting. This will be the last time we look at recruiting until National Signing Day. Okay, QB's Jameis is going to Florida. That is a massive pickup for the Gators. Running back looks like Yeldon is down to USC or Ohio State. So right there, Kenyon Drake is going to Tennessee. Gurley's going to Tennessee. So Tennessee gets a couple of stud five-star running backs. Go to wide receiver and we got UTSA, Bam. Okay, so there's still four teams in the running. I kind of hope he goes to Bam out of those teams. From Shepard, we know OU. I like it. We know Diggs at Notre Dame. Ta Tennessee's already got three five stars there. Tackle. Humphrey's looking like Texas or Virginia. Decker, Ohio State. We knew that. And the other one was Ronnie Stanley, Michigan. We knew that. We knew the guards going to Notre Dame. Defensive end. Buckner looking like 
Tennessee, Florida, well, okay, a lot of teams still in the run in there. Too close to call once again. Vanderbilt is going to get Mario Williams. That's a huge recruit for them. Leonard Williams, we knew. Eddie Goldman is going to end up at UNC. And Eric Armstead, looking like just four, you know, kind of mid major -y type teams. Oregon State's obviously in the pack, but uh, there we go. That's where Eric Armstead. We don't know where Leonard Floyd went. Shaq Thompson might go to Tennessee. AM is right there. Reggie Ragland might go to Tennessee, Alabama, Florida. That is it there corner uh ronald darby might go to tennessee so tennessee is trying to put together a great recruiting class and then we already knew the strong safety was in notre dame yeah landon collins going to notre dame so that is where our recruits are sitting we are going to go look at the top 25 yeah top 25 so ohio state still 12 and 0 arizona 12 and 0 stanford 11 and 1 notre dame 10 and 2 michigan 10 and 2 penn state florida florida state uh looks like usc might have lost again usc 8 and 4 they just don't win enough games it, it looks like it's going to be arizona versus ohio state unless arizona uh, loses in their conference championship game, but then we might get Stanford anyway. So it's looking like if Ohio State beats Illinois, it's going to be the winner of Arizona Stanford. Okay, we're going to sim through conference championship weekend. We're going to go to bowl season. All right, none of our guys on the uh, on the Heisman list never are, except Cam won it one year. Okay, so we have our matchup. It's Arizona versus Ohio State. Okay, we're just going to look at the bowl games here. We did see, obviously, the main one, though. Arizona versus Ohio State. Once again, it seems like a pretty big mismatch, but we will see. Uh, Clemson, Nevada. Michigan's going to play Kansas State. Auburn, Texas. Notre Dame playing one loss Rutgers. Like Notre Dame was a game away. There's third. I would have loved Michigan or Ohio State, Notre Dame. Florida State, Penn State, Georgia, LSU. All right, so that's where we sit, guys. Uh, Arizona. Let's go look at this Arizona team. All right, so here's this Arizona team. We'll just kind of go. Uh, we probably want to look at their whole roster. They don't look that great. They have a good center, a good QB, a good safety, good running back. They look okay. Ohio State should absolutely smash them, but we have had some weird upsets in these games. I cannot wait till there's a playoff. Oh, I almost just simulated through this. Um, but we will, we will hop in. I will be shocked if Ohio State doesn't blow the doors off this team. But who knows? You never know. That's all I'll say. So they have a really good offense, 40 points per game in the pack, which isn't bad. This Ohio State team could go down as one of the best teams we've seen statistically in the sim. I don't think they have the QB to kind of put them at that level, but O-line, defense, everything. First in the country in offense and fourth in defense is pretty incredible. So once again, if Arizona pulls off this upset, even though they're somehow the one seed, it will be absolutely shocking. This would give Ohio State their second natty, which would match Michigan for the most in the sim so this is just big all around guys this would be huge for ohio state finally get that monkey off their back and win a second after having just incredible recruiting classes over and over but arizona's up 14 nothing so 14 3 21 9 oh my goodness arizona 21 18 arizona is holding on for dear life and i think this is ohio state's football now Woods throw away, Woods. Woods thrown away, Rush. Oh, they scored somehow. Woods, okay, they just got a 44-yard touchdown. Woods to Bridges somehow. Okay, we're gonna go next change. Okay, so Ohio State's up four. Arizona's trying to drive here. Putting a bit of a drive together. Okay, we're gonna watch from right here. Ohio State is up four on the Arizona Wildcats. 237 left. They're running this wishbone stuff. Here we go. Oh, and we got a throw away. Third and eight. A uh, quick throw away there from Arizona. A little weird, but uh, yeah, they are stuck for. They need a touchdown. A touchdown will put the absolute hammer on Ohio State. A little, oh my gosh, that's going to be a pick six or close. Oh my goodness, they try a tunnel screen. The corner steps in front for a pick six, and that is going to wrap it up. Ohio State is your 2011 national champions. Wow. Pick six to basically end it. Arizona scored there. Oh my God, Arizona. 26. Who's got the ball right now? Okay, somehow Arizona has the ball with 30 seconds left. How? They scored and got the ball back. I, I was just going to super sim to make this a little shorter, but somehow Arizona Arizona got the ball back. They're only stuck five, 30 seconds left. They still have a timeout. So, I mean, I'm not super confident, but uh, it ain't over somehow. Why are they not snapping the ball, dude? Ohio State is winning in the fourth. Why are you dicking around? Oh my goodness, they got a huge run. 
Wow, I don't even know what to say. There's nine seconds left. They do have a timeout. They are gonna use, no, they're not gonna use it. Oh my goodness, is Arizona somehow gonna do this? I don't even, holy crap. Okay, I, I literally was crowning Ohio State and just some craziness happened. He's gonna tuck and run. Okay, that is gonna do it. Ohio State got a little hairy there at the end, but Ohio State is gonna do it. Oh, there's one second left. Why do I, <laughs> I keep crowning them. <laughs> I keep crowning Ohio State early. If they somehow Arizona wins on a walk-off touchdown here, uh, all right, then they do. Throws it up. Oh my goodness, I thought he was gonna catch up. Okay, there it is, finally for the third time. Ohio State 2011 National Champions finally takes off that run for Michigan where they were incredible for three straight years. Ohio State 2011 knocks off Arizona. They are national champs. This is their second, they also won in 2005. So Michigan and Ohio State, the only teams with, oh, this is Ohio State's third. They actually won in 2002, the very first year when we didn't really have players recruiting or anything so technically they've won three i'm not really going to count that just because it was none of our recruiting classes but technically they won three but since it's really been like our guys and you know us watching all the recruiting and stuff they've won two so i still think it's pretty you know basically tied between them and michigan but we'll give ohio state the uh the tiebreaker there okay so huge year for ohio state they finally do it. Between 05 and now, they were consistently had the most talent, in my opinion. Never were able to get it done. So that has got to feel good for Buckeyes Nation to finally get one, beat Michigan in that crazy game, and win it all. Okay, we're gonna advance to the end of bowl season here. Then we're gonna go take a look at the season stats. All-Americans, top 25, all that. All right, so let's look at the final top 25 Heisman All-Americans. So Ohio State going to be the number one team. Notre Dame right there behind him. Penn State, Arizona, Michigan, only two losses. Georgia, Auburn, USC right there. Let's look at the Heisman. We already seen this, not our guys. This Arizona QB actually won it, so he must have had a really good year. Ohio State QB right there as well. All-Americans, Gordon from Nevada, Washington. Tavon Austin, what did he do? Tavon Austin just had 2,185. I, I literally had to do a double take with nine, 29 touchdowns for Navy. All right, so apparently go to Navy if you want to get passes thrown to you. Tyron Smith, Chance Warmack, Ohio State had every first team All-American offensive lineman. Every single one. That has, that's never happened, right? That's insane. And then the left end too, and he's a freshman. How many sacks did he get? Seven and a half as a freshman to it. Khalil Mack in his junior year. Oh my gosh, I'm like a little flabbergasted. Alec Ogletree, freaking Ohio State, man. My goodness. Crazy, okay, let's look at second team. They're running back from Ohio State, 1,400 yards. AJ Green finally kind of put it together in his senior year. He was behind Dez, so. And somehow they got the second team left tackle. They had six linemen and, and the second team right guard. I don't get how that works, but Ohio State just had the best O-line of literally all time. Okay, Sheldon Richardson at D-tackle, Aaron Donald at D-tackle, eight and a half sacks for Donald. I'll, I'm a little flabbergasted by what Ohio State just did there. Um, yeah, Marcus Mariota, first team All-American, freshman All-American, that's huge. De'Anthony Thomas, forgot about him, set eight, almost 800 yards at UCF. Pui, I don't want to pronounce his name, but Michigan, that's good for them. Greg Robinson, AM, to it. First team All Americans, so they definitely made that. Timmy Jernigan. Uh, ha, ha, ha Ha Clinton Dix, that's big for Florida. There we go. So that's our All American teams. I, I'm still like a little just in shock and awe at Ohio State's O line there. Gonna go through the stats here. Go through all NCAA first, then we'll look at. Uh, that team. So, let, who led the team? Nation Navy quarterback. He threw 2,000 freaking yards to to our buddy there, Tavon Austin. So yeah, uh, Mike Stewart. Not really a bunch of our guys. We had top Marcus Mariota right there. Touchdowns. Yeah, not our guys really. It's a bunch of other guys. So that's hey, that's all good. Uh, if we look at rushing, none of our guys. Eddie Lacy right there from Minnesota, 1,600 yards. That's it's a good year, obviously. Not bad. Look at TDs. Everett Edwards, Eddie Lacy right there. So okay. Avon Austin, 2,185 yards. That is freaking incredible. Um, Odell Beckham, is he a freshman? He had 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns. So that's pretty good. And yeah, 
yeah, Tavon, 29 touchdowns. I don't even want to look at that. That's too crazy. Uh, none of our guys really for tackles. Tackles for loss. Khalil Mack right there, 27 sacks. Khalil Mack had nine and a half, so right around the lead. Lawrence, so none of our guys had really insane. Oh, haha, Clinton Dix, five, five interceptions as a true freshman. Crazy. Okay, now I'm going to look at individual teams really, really quick. Uh, just kind of similar. Auburn, how did Brian Mallett, oh, not honestly that great. They must have been really trying to run the ball. But I thought Auburn had a sneaky chance. They had a lot of talent this year, but not going to get it done. Uh, Florida, who do they have? I think this Ralph guy is pretty good, but I don't think they have anybody we really wanted to look at. Super close. Miami. Matt Barkley Jr. Decent year, but it's not letting him throw the rock. Really trying to run run the ball. Okay, Michigan. So Mark Ingram gonna finish his career with 5,200 rushing yards. 14, oh, over 1,200 yards every year. You know, just the absolute consummate pro. Never really had much re receiving work, but uh, wow. Gotta go down as the best running back in, in Michigan history. Crazy receiving, they had the Parker guys. Kelsey had a bit of a back, well, I mean, he's a tight end playing in a run heavy offense, but obviously when they needed to play, Travis Kelsey was always, always right there. Walker played okay, but that was the big thing this year. They didn't have that QB. They had that stud for the last three years who was so good for them. To lose him and you have an 85 overall starter is gonna be tough. Notre Dame had this Roy guy, Roy Odom, had an amazing year, honestly. 40 touchdowns, added 700 on the ground. They had Richardson with the 1,000, Monty Ball. This team's gonna be right there next year. They lose Michael Floyd, but I, I think, you know, Notre Dame is gonna be right there. Okay, we have our national champions, Ohio State. This guy played really well for them. Greg Woods, 180 QB rating, 32 touchdowns, only four picks. I think he ran the ball well too. 700 yards, Jonathan Hall and Andre Jones. They're still gonna have this Hall next year, so they're gonna be able to run the ball. They are losing A.J. Green. This did feel like Ohio State's still gonna be good, but this did feel like the year Ohio State had to do it. AJ Thid, friggin' the best O-line maybe of, of all time. This felt like the year they had to get it done. Blake Bortles, just kind of splitting time here. Might have got injured. Uh, looks like he could be good for them though. Texas. How did Andrew Luck do? He, we did not see much at Andrew Luck over his four years. That might have been the quietest four years. He didn't really play good his freshman or sophomore year. Played pretty good this year, but not incredible. Pretty freaking quiet. Pryor came in. Luck might have got injured a little bit. Luck ran the ball well. It ran for like over 600 yards the last two years, but uh, yeah, not quite good enough. They Texas does have a ton of talent with Johnny Manziel coming up though, and they have some really good receivers. Go to USC, Marcus Mariota. I think this guy's gonna be pretty freaking incredible for them. They have some really good young talent. I think this team, Keenan Allen, they're gonna have Alshon Jeffrey. They have Justin Hunter. This team has a ton of talent. Remember a few years ago too, they had the eight five stars. I think they are gonna be making some noise. Okay, we're gonna sim just to National Signing Day. Look at the final recruiting. Look at the final rankings. I think Tennessee has a chance to have the best recruiting class. They look like they could really, really do it this year. So gonna go there and then that will wrap up our 2011 season. All right, National Signing Day. Here we go. Like I said, okay, so Amari Cooper going to Alabama. Okay, Jameis, we knew. That is huge get. At Ohio State gets TJ Yeldon. That's a big get for them. Ken Yin and we knew both those guys were going to Tennessee. Okay, wide receivers. Amari, we have not seen Bama get the big time recruits. To finally get one is huge for them. We knew that. New digs. Dorial, yeah, we knew that. So we knew all those. Humphreys ends up at Texas. That's big for them. And then we knew Decker, Ohio State, and Stanley's going to Michigan. We know the guard's going to Notre Dame. DeForest Buckner goes to Michigan. That's a huge get for Michigan. That fits them so well. A big six foot seven, 280 pound defensive end. Great. Leonard Williams, Ohio State just counters with, counters with Leonard Williams. Knew that Eric Armstead ends up at Nevada. I'm kind of shocked USC didn't go a little harder at this guy. That would have been the perfect guy to stay in Cali, dominate on the inside. Shaq Thompson going to Tennessee and Reggie Ragland. So Tennessee, I think, is going to lock down the most five stars for sure. Ronald Darby going to Auburn and then Landon Collins going to Notre Dame. So let's look at these top classes. I think Tennessee, as long as it, yeah. So Tennessee is going to have the number one class. Ohio State right there. Notre Dame, USC, where's Michigan? Michigan, a little further back, only one five star. USC actually has no five stars and uh, a ton of four stars though. Ohio State and Tennessee, well, Notre Dame's right there too. So yeah, 
yeah, some really good recruiting classes there. North Carolina is low key, just getting good recruiting classes every year as well. So that is it, guys. That is going to wrap up the 2011 season. I'll see you for the 2012 with the 2013 recruiting class. All right, guys, here we go. We are about to start the 2012 season. 2013 recruiting class Michigan just or no sorry Ohio State just won their first national championship in a few years beat I can't even remember I recorded that yesterday but Michigan Ohio State have been on a roll Tennessee just had the best recruiting class last year I don't know if I gave that Tennessee class enough credit they had six five stars I think so far USC had a year where they had eight five stars and Ohio State had a year where they had six and Tennessee had just had six so Tennessee could be making some noise here um um, th now this recruiting class 2013 I think it is very very good kind of guys at every spot offense defense I'd say it's a little maybe more defensive heavy but the next few I'd say the next three to four recruiting classes are all unbelievable so we are about to get a ton of talent into this sim now where this class isn't amazing still good but where the next few classes are really incredible is at QB there's only two in this class first we have Jared Goff he's from California he went to UCLA in real life right now now it's looking like USC, maybe Bama, or, or no, he didn't go to UCLA. Sorry, he went to Cal. I, he went to Cal. USC, Alabama, Cal, Texas, Navy. Then we have Baker Mayfield. He's from Texas. He ended up, he started at Texas Tech, then went to Oklahoma. He's at AM, LSU, Arkansas, or Texas. And we go running back. We have Ezekiel Elliott. Obviously went to Ohio State in real life. He's from Missouri, though. So kind of in the north, but not totally. USC, Ohio State, Michigan, Texas, Notre Dame. Basically the five best schools, I would say, in the sim. Then we have Derek Henry. Went to BAM in real life, obviously. He is from the state of Florida, though, and his top three are the three big Florida schools. Then we have Alvin Kamara, who also started out at Alabama before transferring to Tennessee. He's going to Auburn, Tennessee right there, Notre Dame right there, Michigan, Ohio State. So those are the three running backs, three like super studs. Like those are stud, stud running backs wide receiver there's only two but there's a really good one here in mike williams from south carolina went to clemson in real life leaning clemson right now but there's also south carolina auburn georgia then the other one is a little laquan tread will i believe he went to ole miss in real life he was a first round pick in the nfl arizona notre dame usc ohio state navy we do have a tight end it is oj howard went to bama my top 15 pick in the NFL draft. He's leaning Auburn, Ohio State, Tennessee as his top three. Okay, only one offensive lineman, but he is a stud. It is Laramie Tunsil. He's leaning Tennessee is all of a sudden really starting to get some momentum here. He's leading Bama, Tennessee, Notre Dame, uh, Florida, Georgia. No guards or centers this year. Uh, DNs, we have Joey Bosa, a freak, freak show. Went to Ohio State in real life. He's leading Texas, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Michigan, SC. So he's from Florida, but not really looking at the Florida schools. Definitely looking like he might go up north. Then we have TJ Watt, who's like a two-star recruit coming out of high school. He is from the state of Wisconsin. He's leading Michigan, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Tennessee, Michigan State. His brother, JJ did go to Tennessee in the sim. Obviously, that won't affect them in the sim, but that'd be kind of cool if he did end up there. Then our third one is Jonathan Allen. He's kind of a mid, uh, in between a D and D tackle kind of tweener. He went to Alabama in real life. He's leaning SC, Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Tennessee. Tennessee is making noise, guys. Oh, and I missed one, Carl Lawson as well. So another good pass rusher. He's leaning Notre Dame, Georgia, Auburn, Tennessee. Tennessee is in on everybody. Okay, then we have some two really good defensive tackles. First one is Robert Kindichi. He was actually the number one recruit in the class. He was a second round pick, kind of a bust in the NFL, but super duper recruit coming out. He went to Ole Miss in real life. He's leaning Georgia, Auburn, Clemens, Clemson, Florida State. Then we have Chris Jones. Um, he's leaning Notre Dame, South Carolina, Ohio State, Stanford, Arizona. That is it for that. Uh, we do have an outside, I believe. Reuben Foster. So he went to Bama in real life. Super nasty in college. Was good in the NFL, but he had some you know personal issues and, and kind of got cut and whatever. But insanely talented linebacker. He's leaning Bama, Tennessee, Florida, Miami. And then we should have a middle as well. Oh, he's right there. Jalen Smith. Now, Jalen Smith was another one who was an absolute superstar at Notre Dame. People thought he could have been like a top five pick, but he blew out his knee the last game of the year in their bowl game. Ended up falling to the 
second round, had a decent NFL career, but before he got hurt, they thought this was the next superstar NFL middle linebacker. He's leaning Tennessee, Bama, Florida, Georgia, Notre Dame, where he actually ended up. Then if we go corner, we got Jalen Ramp. Tennessee is in on everybody, guys. I don't know what happened. Tennessee, all of a sudden, this could be the new superpower in the SEC. We have not seen an SEC team really come to the forefront. Georgia was pretty good at the start of the sim. Bama was good the first like year or two, but both them have kind of fallen back all of a sudden Tennessee best recruiting class last year I actually just want to take a look at uh how were they the year before okay so they weren't the top five the year before but I mean this year and last year if they can close in on some of these recruits their recruiting class is going to be unbelievable then they're also Notre Dame Michigan Ohio State so kind of all the big guys then we have Vernon Hargraves Texas Michigan Florida Auburn he went to Florida in real life and Kendall Fuller he's got Notre Dame Ohio State Texas uh Florida State uh SC. Oh, and we have Tredavious White. This is probably the best cornerback class we've ever had in the sim for like superstar level guys. Tredavious White, he went to LSU's from Louisiana, but also Bama, Tennessee, uh, Notre Dame, Florida. Then I believe we have one safety. It is a strong safety, Vaughn Bell. He's Bama, Tennessee, Michigan, Georgia, LSU. So that is the recruiting class, guys. I think it's a really good one. There's not those high, high level QBs, but those are coming. Just a little preview. I have them written out. I don't, I don't know if I want to give it away, but just over the next two years, the top two QBs next year are Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Then the next year, it's Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and, and Kyler Murray. So we're about to have, is there another QB next year as well? I think there's only those two, but I mean, it's friggin' Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. So they are going to be absolutely just people are going to be fighting tooth and nail to get those two. Okay, so that is a recruiting class, guys. That is what we are looking like. We're going to sim to the start of the season here. We're going to go through top 25, look at the roster, see who the teams who are looking like they're going to be the best this year. All right, let's look at the top 25. So Ohio State did win the Natty last year. They are defending champs, but if you look at their overall, I think this, they've been a 99, especially on offense the last few years. So they're 95, only a 93 on offense. They definitely might finally take a step back this year. Then we have Notre Dame in second. They look Look like studs once again Michigan might take a little bit a bit of a step back Penn State is right in line with those other two teams USC 99 across the board they look like the best team in the country but they always seem to stumble they don't seem to ever get it done Georgia looks okay Auburn looks okay Mississippi State, Texas looks pretty good. Navy somehow is a 90 overall. AM, we'll definitely have to look at AM's roster. Um, Tennessee, I want to, they're a year or two away, but obviously I think Tennessee is going to be making some noise soon. Florida actually is a really good team. We got to make sure we look at Florida. West Virginia. Okay, we gotta remember to look at West Virginia. Okay, I, it might be hard to remember all those. I wish I could look at the rosters just in that top 25, but I can't, I gotta go through. But okay, there we go. So we're gonna make sure we try to look at all these teams. This year could be interesting, like I said, because this is a transition year. This is not just, you know, Michigan, Ohio State. This is the first year in a minute that it feels like a few other teams could step in. Now, Auburn was up there. They got Aaron Donald, DJ Fluker, Taj Boyd in a QB. Wow, okay, Auburn, we said last year they're not insanely deep but they have some high level talent i mean between fluker boyd and aaron donald that is a great top three to be leading your program um clemson has never really got it done stefan gilmore is really good for them they've got a few recruits here and there but florida florida was stacked they got khalil mack jarvis jones at the end robert woods at receiver d milner at corner but big question what's their qb situation they got oh they have true freshman Jameis winston so they they might be a year away, but they're going to lose some guys next year. But I mean, they got young Jameis. They've been getting some decent recruits. So yeah, they're going to be set up for success. Florida State, uh, I don't think they really are going to be doing anything. Georgia looked okay, but they've been not. They got Brandon Cooks, Bridgewater, only a sophomore. Cooks and Bridgewater, Shazier. So they got some players, but uh, I don't think they're national title contenders this year. Okay, I'm going to try not to miss. I don't even remember all those teams I said. LSU, Louisville, Marshall, Miami. Nothing really on Miami. 
Okay, let's just look at Michigan State. Yeah, it's good in the running back. I, I still think this Michigan team is going to be in the mix, but oh, look at their QB. So that's Michigan. Is, they got this freshman who looks decent, but they're starting an 80 overall junior. They got two really good running backs in the waiting room. They do have this Trey Cox this year who's good, really good. So they're still going to be able to run the ball. They don't have the weapons either. So Michigan looks like they might finally, they lost Kelsey, might finally be on the downturn a a little bit. I, I think they're going to still be good, but I don't think they're going to be just DeForest Buckner is going to start right away from them. They, they, they look like they actually could be pretty solid defensively, depending on their secondary. A few good linebackers, CJ Mosley right there. Uh, great. Oh my gosh. They got two, re two really good senior quarterbacks. So they have actually a good secondary. Oh, they have a great secondary. One, only one good safety, but I mean, one of these two could start it strong. So honestly, Michigan still is a shot. They can run the ball and they have a really look like a solid defense. So I'm not going to give up on them but uh minnesota they had a few guys last year but i think they graduated mississippi state have they been getting guys they got fletcher cox gabe jackson they've got a few big recruits quandre Diggs and sammy watkins so they've been getting some guys i don't think this is your somehow navy like Tavon might be the best player in the country 2100 yards last year uh playing at navy no one uh none of our other recruits but they actually have some decent players nebraska oh north carolina has been getting actually some really good recruiting classes cohen looks good i I don't know if it's been a bunch of our guys but like they're always in kind of the top five they don't look that great this year though okay notre dame looks like they could be the best team in the country you got this corner trent richardson is a senior gonna be one of the best running backs in the country another really good running back right in behind him they have this steve harley only a sophomore and they have this shelton allen i'm kind of hoping they start this sophomore kid though you know he could grow into something really good for them they got in brought in a good freshman this year wasn't one of our guys but hey they're set up there really good running back but they do need to recruit one they'll have this silva next year but they haven't been getting that big running back recruit two good receivers here then they got stefan Diggs to grow so they're in a good spot there austin sparing jenkins base still a freshman because they redshirted him um let's see what their o-line o-line looks good eh, good okay yeah the o-line's good o-line's good it's not like a lead elite but they got jade Clowney, clowny only a sophomore patrick washington osborne vincent okay a detail oh that was end um um, Jacob Stevenson. Okay, they have some good, good D tackles. None of them are underclassmen, so they'll have to, you know, start recruiting there. But good outside linebacker here. Corner in the middle. That's good. Um, McCray. Okay, they're good on linebacker. Not at corner. They're secondary. They got true freshman Landon Collins is their best player in their secondary. So if Notre Dame doesn't get it done, I think it will be because they're secondary. Okay, Ohio State seems like they could be taking a bit of a step back. They have a senior, 83 overall. They got this Chip Mueller guy. They have not got in that super elite, you know, young quarterback. So they're going to be relying on a not great quarterback there. Jonathan Hall looks good. They have TJ Yeldon as a freshman who can step in next year. And this Garrett looks pretty good too. So running game should be fine going forward. Charles Bridges, ooh and haven't got that superstar young receiver. So this is starting to feel like, like Ohio, they got this good freshman. That's not one of our guys. Um, Taylor Decker, he's gonna step right in. Warmack, but he's a senior. Martin, but he's a senior. So they have a good O-line. They're losing a ton of talent off it by next year. Two, it's gonna be great for them. Leslie, so good. Look, yeah, Sheldon Richardson, but he's a senior. So both their interior, but then they're bringing in Leonard Williams. So I, I think where they haven't quite hit, like they, they got, Peakling Ogletree, good at linebacker. Where they haven't, yeah, they haven't hit a corner. They got Joyner, he was really good for them. Martin. So, hey, they're going to be right there. They haven't hit at QB and their skill positions aren't like they have been in past years. So, that could be where we see a little bit of faltering here. South Carolina, who is the really good team that has some. Okay, we want to look at Tennessee, even though they're young. So, I, I think they're a year away. They got Marcus Lattimore, Kelvin Benjamin, only a sophomore. I, I think we got to give them a year or two, but they have a ton of young talent. I don't think they brought in the QB. No, this guy's only a sophomore. He's an 85. I, I think this is going to be a transition year, but they look like they're starting to put the building blocks together. Oh, and they got Todd Gurley. So they're going to go from Lattimore to Gurley. Uh, Kenyon Drake as well. They got Benjamin Doriel Green Beckham. So they got two stud wide receivers young, a freshman and a sophomore. 
So if they are able to bring in a QB in this recruiting class, I don't know. Actually, that guy's decent, but yeah, they just got to keep filling it out. Texas, I think they have Johnny Manziel starting. He's only a freshman. They're going to have him a 92 overall for four years if he doesn't leave early. That is huge. Don't have that young bell cow. They have this senior right here. Johnny Football. They have Ricky Moss. They got Jarvis Landry. Oh, I thought they had... Oh, and they have Marquise Lee, both sophomores. So they're going to have a fun, exciting offense led by Manziel. Um, let's go look at their defense. How's that look? Mitchell, sophomore, can grow. Garrett, freshman, can grow. Uh, senior, sophomore. So they, they have some good underclassmen here. Oh, linebacker, not great. Yeah, definitely not great. They have a really good corner here, but he's a senior, a good sophomore. They'll be okay there. Junior, so that's pretty good safety have. So they only have one really good safety on the roster. AM looked like they were pretty good overall wise. They don't look amazing to me though. Okay, they got this Pope actually, who's a senior, and they got a sophomore who actually looks like an absolute stud. Jeremiah Hayes, okay. Uh, East, good running back. Um, wide receiver, Robinson, none of our guys. So they look like they'll be good. I don't know. I mean, they have a 97 senior quarterback. So that in these Sims can always lead you down to a good path. Okay, USC looked like overall wise the best team in the country. They got sophomore Marcus Mariota, who's a 95 already. So they hopefully have him for three years if you're an SC fan. Running back, they have this Adams is a senior, a sophomore in this Connor Ford. So they're gonna be good for the next few years. They brought in this guy, he's only a freshman, only 81 speed though, not amazing. They have Keenan Allen as a junior, Justin Hunter is a junior. So they gotta get another big time recruit, but they're gonna have these two for the next two years. And oh, they're gonna have, they, these is their top three for the next three years. So they got studs, tight end, literally nothing. Great left tackle in Central Henderson. Great left guard, but he's a senior, but they have a good sophomore in the wings. Junior center, so they're gonna have him next year. Junior, okay, so this team is looking good. Jake Matthews only a junior, so their O-line is looking really good. Senior, senior, sophomore underclass, junior D end there. Sharif Floyd in the middle. They need another one to come up, but Sharif Floyd for the next two years, that's a stud. Thompson, good, but he's a senior. They got Russ Johnson and Manti Teo and this Clark guy. And they have Anthony Barr on outside linebacker. Corner, they have a stud. They have a good junior, so they'll have another one next year. And they have a fret or junior. So they got to recruit some corners, but man, Eric Reed at safety with this Banks guy. And so yes, USC top down. They might be the best team in the country this year. I feel like we're missing someone. I want to go look at that top 25. Who is the good team in the top 25? I said, oh yeah, they look really good. I want to make sure I look at their team. No, we looked Penn State, Auburn, Texas, Virginia Tech, A&M, Nebraska, LSU, Florida. Florida, yeah, we looked at Florida. So I think that was the team I wanted to make sure I looked at, but we did. So. We, uh, yeah, there's some good teams. It definitely feels like the Michigan, Ohio State dominance could be behind us. It's obviously not for sure. I'm gonna quickly look at the best players in the country. So Pierre Smith for Bama, best quarterback, Chavez. Whereas, oh, AJ McCarron, um, Taj Boyd, Marcus Mariota in the wings as a sophomore. Running back, Cox, Michael Harris, Trent Richardson for our guys. He's kind of our top level guy. Marshawn Lattimore, only a sophomore. Wide receivers, Tavon might be the best player in the country. DeAndre right, right behind him. Keenan Allen right there. Justin, so USC has just some studs there. Robert Woods for Florida. So there's our kind of big time receivers. Tight ends, Courtney Smith, any of our guys. None of our guys near the top. Left tackle at Central Henderson is the top. Then Notre Dame's right there. So once again, so Ohio State, Michigan not there at left tackle. They do have this insane guard in Chance Warmack. Brandon Sheriff right there for uh, Wisconsin. I don't know if we'd have any centers, but you, yeah, USC has a very good O-line. Not quite Ohio State's last year, and they still have Zach Martin, but very good nonetheless. DJ Fluker, best tackle in the country. Uh, right tackle with Jake Matthews right behind him. Luke Jokel right there as well. D'End Johnson, Jarvis Jones right there. Clowney already as a sophomore is in 94. Vic Beasley there for South Carolina. Khalil Mack, best right end in the country by far blowing everyone else out of the water. Aaron Donald, bestie tackle in the country. And he's only a junior, along with Fletcher Cox, Sheldon Richardson, Sharif Floyd. Downing right there. I don't think any of our guys at left outside. Middle linebacker, it's Luke Keekley, Best in the country. Notre Dame's guys right there behind him. Manti Teo for USC. 
Uh, right outside Anthony Barr is the second best in the country behind this guy. Corner, Stephon Gilmore and Mo Claiborne, two seniors right at the top. I don't know, D. Milner, he's only a junior, so he'll probably be the best in the country next year. Looks like our guys there. Free safety, it is Tyran Matthew, only a junior. LaMarcus Joyner, only a junior as well. Eric Reed, only a junior, so three good guys there. And strong safety, I don't know if we have any big time strong safeties right now that we made. There it is, guys, that is the rosters. That's our top 25. That is, we'll quickly look at the Heisman and All-Americans just really quick. Tavon Austin, first in the Heisman. Mariota right there. That makes sense. Those two should have huge years. Preseason All-Americans. Marcus Mariota, Tavon Austin, Chance Warmack, Zach Martin, DJ Fluker, Jake Matthews, Stephon Tuitt. Looks like our guys there. Second team, Chavez, Odell Beckham, only a sophomore. Central Henderson, Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, Fletcher Cox, Luke Keekly, and that's it. Okay, no freshmen. So there we go. We are through that. Let's advance. We're going to go to week nine. We're going to look at recruiting. We'll look at the top 25. All right, here we are in week nine. We're going to look at recruiting. Going to go through. I already see a big one there. Oh my God, Jared Goff. Is that Colorado State, Spurs, Cal, USC, Baker looking like A&M. That'd be a big get for A&M. Running back, Zeke is going to Notre Dame. I think I was just looking and they didn't really have a great running back prospect. So that's huge. Derek Henry looking like the U. I'd, I'd like him at the U. I think that's cool. Kamara going to Notre Dame. Oh my goodness. The one-two punch of Kamara and Ezekiel Elliott. Notre freaking name. Mike Williams looking like Georgia, at, uh, South Carolina or Clemson. Laquan Treadwell looking like Ohio, Iowa State, Ohio State are his one-two. I'd rather him go to Ohio State, but we'll see. OJ Howard. Is that Miami of Ohio or Ohio State, Auburn, Tennessee? So Tennessee doesn't really seem to be in on any of these guys. Tunsil either going Tulsa, Alabama, Florida State, BC, in with a lot of schools. Georgia still in there as well. Deanne, Joey Bosa might go to Notre Dame. Ohio State still has a chance though. TJ Watt might go to Notre Dame. So I was saying Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee looks like they could have a big year. All of a sudden, Notre Dame looking like they could be absolute scary. Down to SC or Tennessee for Jonathan Allen. That'd be big wherever he goes. Carl Lawson going to Georgia. That's a good get for them. D tackles. We have Kendichi, uh, Clemson, ECU. Looks like his top two. I hope he goes to Clemson. Chris Jones might go to Notre Dame. Ohio State still in it though. Wow. Notre Dame could put together a class, ladies and gentlemen. Reuben Foster looking like Tennessee or Miami. Maybe Bama. Middle linebacker. Jalen Smith looking like Tennessee, maybe Bama. Cornerback, Ramsey. Tennessee, maybe Michigan, maybe Auburn. So Tennessee, okay. Tennessee can still get shit done. Hargreaves looking like Florida or USC. Fuller is going to USC. That's a big get for SC. Tredavious White looking like Tennessee. So Tennessee's looking like they might load up defensively. So the Notre Dame's not really get much on defense. It seems like uh, Tennessee could really make some damage, do some damage there. Von Bell looking like LSU, maybe Tennessee or Michigan is in front. So there we go with the recruiting. Notre Dame and Tennessee look like they could have some huge classes. Okay, top 25. Let's see. Michigan still 6-0. Ohio State still 6-0. I was going to end. Oh, we might. This might be the year. Things change. Blah, blah, blah. No. Uh, when's you? Where's Notre Dame? Oh, God. Notre Dame. Not even in the top 25 unless I missed them somehow. I want to look at USC schedule. Team schedule. Oh, they just played no Notre Dame's two and five somehow. Holy crap. And they were 99 overall. I, I don't know how that happened. Okay. Penn State, they play Ohio. Uh, guys, I, I don't want to watch just, but like who else do you guys want to see at the end of the year here? Texas 5-1, do they have anyone? TCU, Kansas, they, like guys, I, I don't want to do it again, but I got it. They're six and oh again, both of them. How do we not? We got to sim to week 14. People might get mad in the comments, but I don't know how you don't. They've been the two best teams for like five years and they meet every year in this game. And the winner, as long as, if they're both six and or like 10 and 0 or one, one loss, the winner's going to make the natty. So I don't know. We got to watch it. All right, week 14. Let's look at the top 25. Ohio State 10 and 1. Where's Michigan? Okay, Michigan might have finally fallen off. 9 and 2. Okay, well, I don't think there's going to be a game for us here then. 
Where, who is Texas play? We might have to go to, maybe we'll go watch a conference championship game if there's if there's a good one. I'm gonna save the conference championship weekend and we'll take a look there. Okay, we're gonna look at recruiting. We are in conference championship weekend. We'll look at what we got here. QB, we knew Jared Goff. Baker does sign at AM. That's a big get for them. Nice five-star QB. Running back, we knew Zeke. We, Henry does end up at Miami and we know Kamara, so. Great gets for uh, for Notre Dame. Mike Williams going to Georgia. Laquan, Laquan Treadwell going to Iowa State. Damn. Uh, OJ Howard, maybe Tennessee, maybe Ohio State, possibly Georgia. So there, that could be the first big get we see there. Laramie Tunsil looking like jo Florida or Georgia. The end, Joey Bosa looking like USC now all of a sudden, maybe Louisville, maybe Notre Dame. TJ Watt. So those guys were actually, yeah, remember, they were also, yeah, okay, so they were gonna go to Notre Dame. That was part of the reason I'm like, wow, they're recruiting class. Now all of a sudden it flipped. These, now Notre Dame is in second year, but it's down in Notre Dame or Tennessee there. And is Notre Dame, Notre Dame's not out there, but might be tough. Jonathan Allen, though, was gonna go to USC, might go to Tennessee now. So I don't even know. Carl Lawson is going to Georgia. Kandichi does go to Georgia. Chris Jones, looking like he's gonna go to Louisiana Monroe over Ohio State. Do your thing. Ruben Foster, looking like Tennessee or Miami. Tennessee, it's it's not over, but they get Jalen Smith. That's a huge get. They were in on the corners. They get Jalen Ramsey. So they got Patrick Peterson, then Jalen Ramsey a few years later. Hargreaves going to Florida. Fuller going to USC. And Tredavious White going to Tennessee. Okay, Tennessee could. This could be huge, guys. I don't know. We it, it Wow. Von Bell going to LSU over Michigan. I did not see Michigan really in on anyone. So it seems like Michigan might have had their run and uh, be, you know, a little bit out of it. Even Ohio State didn't have anything amazing there. Okay, we're going to look at top 25, but Ohio State looks like they're the number one team in the country now. Still, Miami of Ohio, Texas is right there. Georgia, USC. Okay, that's where we're looking. Let's look at scores and schedules. Who's in the uh, conference championships? Illinois, Ohio State. Ohio State should win, but Illinois looks pretty good. USC should win that. Clemson, 10-2. That's a good record for Clemson. Georgia versus Texas A&M. And Northern Illinois versus Miami, Ohio. I really hope Northern Illinois is going to win or we're probably going to get Ohio State Miami of Ohio. If not, I think, who is the other, was it Texas, I think has one loss, but they're not even in their championship game, which is gonna hurt them. So where is that? Oh, do, does the Big Ten not have one in this? No, they don't. So that's gonna hurt them. Okay, I don't think those are any of those we're gonna watch. You know, there's nothing crazy, so we're just gonna sim to bowl season. Rawls wins the Heisman. We got Jenkins, Manziel in third, Paul Mason. So Manziel, our only guy on the list there. Oh yeah, so it's Miami, <laughs> Miami of Ohio. I don't know why we just can't get really good matchups there. Oh, against Georgia, Ohio State lost. Oh my goodness, I missed that. So Ohio State lost to, who was that even, in Illinois? But 11 and one Texas doesn't get in. Oh, can, why can't it have just been Texas, Georgia? That's actually a pretty good sugar bowl. Clemson. So the run of Michigan, Ohio State is officially over. Ohio State lost that game. They're gonna play Tennessee. Crazy. A&M, where did we see? Oh, USC, Illinois in the Rose Bowl. So somehow Illinois knocks off Ohio State. That is absolutely massive. What was the score in that? 35-31 win. Okay, we're just gonna, I, I don't even really wanna watch this game. Georgia doesn't even really have anyone that we know very well. They're only a 90 overall. Like this is a bad matchup. Like this is not the best Georgia team ever. I think they got Teddy Bridgewater at QB, but hey, we'll see what happens. All right, so this is where we sit. Miami of Ohio, sixth best offense in the in the country. Georgia's playing obviously a tougher schedule. They look pretty close stats wise, but I mean, Georgia is much, much more talented. Oh, they got Brandon Cooks and Bridgewater. Pretty good twosome. I mean, I don't think this is, you know, gonna be a legendary Georgia team. They kind of backed their way in and they're playing Miami of Ohio, who's like an 83 overall. But hey, you, you get in, all you can play is the people in front of you. They're a two loss team, but uh, we will see. Okay, we're gonna go into the first here. It is 14-7, but uh, Miami of Ohio, okay, they were driving, but it looks like they're gonna get stopped there. Might get ten, uh, three, yeah, they do. 14, 10, we'll go to the, the halftime. Okay, there it is, 21, 13, Georgia. We're gonna go to the fourth quarter. Yeah, this one's a bit of a laugh here, 34, 14. We're just gonna go to the end of the game unless something crazy happens, I'll jump in, but yeah, 42, 15. This was just an absolute mismatch. Georgia, 23. 
13 or 12 national champions. Definitely a bit anticlimactic that year. Just Georgia was not one of the better teams. I hate that they put these like mid-major teams with a good record, even though they're not uh, the best team in. It's kind of annoying, but uh, yeah, our, they're 2012. So 2012, Natty, Georgia versus Miami, Ohio. So that is Georgia's first natty of the run. So our last national champ, I'll, I'll just kind of go through all the national champions right now, guys. First year, it was Ohio State in 02. 03, it was Texas. 04, South Carolina. 05, Ohio State. 06, Tennessee. 07, Baylor. 08, Arkansas versus Michigan. Then Michigan, Michigan. Then it was Ohio State, Arizona, Georgia, Miami, Ohio. But the last time we had a superstar, at least, programs was 09 we had Michigan Florida State before that it was probably 06 Tennessee Notre Dame the first few years and we had Ohio State versus USC in 05 but the last few years there's always just like kind of one crappy team it is what it is um but Georgia hey that's big they get their national championship Bama doesn't have one here Bridgewater played well 397 two touchdowns Mason was their running back 152 Cooks had, wow, they got Robertson and Cooks, two good guys. Cooks is only a sophomore, he's a 92, 113 yards. That's huge. We'll go Miami of Ohio. I, I don't know one player on their team. Doesn't look like they were all that good. This guy played well. So yeah, that is where we sit. Georgia Bulldogs beat Miami of Ohio to win the 2012 with Natty. All right, okay. We are gonna advance weeks. We're gonna go to end of bowl season. Then we're gonna look at the stats, uh, look at all that kind of stuff. All right. So we have the final top 25. Georgia, Miami of Ohio, Texas, Penn State, Mississippi State, Ohio. Ohio State lost their bowl game too. USC, where'd Michigan finish? Michigan fell off a map, 10 and three. Okay, there we go. So the era of Michigan, Ohio State, seems like it's over. Obviously next year they could still make some noise. There's uh, Johnny Manziel, third in the Heisman. So first team, Smith, Rawls, Parkmore, Central, Chance Warmack, Zach Martin, Jake Matthews. Uh, Sheldon Rich Richardson at D-tackle there. Looks like it. Second team, nothing, nothing. Wow, so Tavon didn't even get it this year. We didn't have much on the second team at all. Wow, not one player. Okay. Oh, I want to look at freshmen actually as well. Usually we litter the freshman team pretty good. Johnny Football, TJ Yeldon, Taylor Decker, DJ Humphreys, DeForest Buckner, Leonard Williams, Ronald Darby. So yeah, definitely some guys on there. Okay, let's look at some of our season stats. We'll look at kind of the NCAA leaders and we'll go look at some of our teams. So Smith, Battle, Chavez, let's look at passing yards. AJ McCarron finished second in the country. Braxton Miller, I forgot about him, starting for Cincinnati. How many yards did he rush for? 800 rushing yards this year. He'll be a, he's like the perfect kind of small school QB. Uh, look at rushing yards, none of our guys. Our, our guys just never get the crazy carries. It's weird, it's never. Marcus Lattimore, 1,200 yards. TDs, none of our guys. Receiving yards. So Tavon fell off a cliff this year. He might've lost his QB or something, like still 1,300 yards, second in the country, but he had over 2,000 his first year. But look at Tavon's four-year career, 629, then 1,000, 2,000, 1,300. Huge career for Tavon. Uh, none of our other guys were even really over a thousand yards, which is kind of crazy. TDs, Tavon, nothing really crazy. Tackles, nothing for tackles. Tackle for loss. It's crazy, guys. It's like Stefan Tuit as a freshman. Oh no, he's a sophomore. 24 and eight and a half sack. Weird, like our big, big guys, like Khalil Mack, didn't finish. He, like he should be finishing with like 15 sacks. I hope they really up those type of numbers for when their new game comes out next year. Nothing for interceptions for our guys. Okay, we're gonna go look at more just individual stats here. Go through it kind of quick, only on the big teams. We're waiting on, we have some guys. Florida, who's Florida's QB? D. Melner, not our guy. Florida State, Georgia won the natty. We'll take a look. Teddy Bridgewater, good year, 28 and five. So Mason was good. Bridgewater added 600 on the ground. They really want to run the ball in Georgia. Uh, receiving yards, Cooks 553. They just don't pass the ball very much. Who'd they have on defense? Ryan Shazier. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember them getting a ton of our other uh, big time recruits. So yeah, that's where they kind of sit. Natty, Georgia. There we go. Bridgewater, let them. LSU, no. Miami, no. 
Michigan fell off the map. I mean, what I said at the start of the year, they have an 80 overall QB. It's just going to be hard to compete with that. Oh, yeah, no. I was thinking Notre Dame had Trent Richardson. Trey Cox, good year for them. They're going to have Melvin Gordon. And who is the other guy? I think they have another. Oh, Devontae Freeman step in next year. They're going to have a really good one-two punch run in the football. Nothing really at receiver. They have some good alignment defensively. Buckner, really good DN. He's a freshman. Wow, he killed it. CJ Mosley, uh, tackles for loss. Buckner might have been the best player on their defense. Perfect Michigan fit. Uh, we'll look at Notre Dame next, even though they didn't play well this year. Same thing, though. I don't think this Shelton Allen was really... Oh, no, this guy actually played more, and he did not play very good at all. I, I had pretty high hopes for him, a 94 or 90 overall junior, but not good enough. Trent, good. They just didn't give him the ball all that much. Just Harley was running the ball, averaging three yards a carry. Uh, receiver, Austin Safarian Jenkins, still only a freshman, technically. Who do they have? Jadavon Clowney, only one and a half. Like, Jadavon should be getting fucking 10 sacks, you know? I, I just don't like how they set up the sim line. That way oh and they have, oh no this is a different Derek Brown interception Bob right okay so yeah Notre Dame did not have a good year they're gonna need much better QB play but Ohio State so that was the thing this year Michigan Ohio State Notre Dame did not have those high level QBs this guy actually played pretty well so that kept him in him but they didn't have those high level QBs this year um, oh, the QB ran for a thousand yards. Jonathan Hall. They have TJ Yeldon stepping in next year, so they'll have a nice freshman running back. I don't think they really have anything with receiver. Um, defensively, Lindsey, Alec Ogletree, Stephon Tuitt, Sheldon Richardson, Luke Keekley's last year. Like, how does Luke Keekley finish the year with 15 tackles, unless he was injured? Right. That doesn't even make sense. Tackles for a loss, Stephon Tuitt. Yeah, Tuitt had a great year. Only a sophomore, yeah. Uh, INTs, Ogletree, LaMarcus Joyner. Oh, still some more teams to look at. Okay, we'll go back to the bottom here. Is USC, Mariota. Okay, decent year, but honestly, I would have thought a little bit more from, oh, he might've been hurt actually. So that could have really hurt USC this year. Looks like this Donnie Hall played quite a few games. So Adams, do they have Marcus Mariota? I don't know if they have a really, but they have some really good young receivers. Didn't really get to throw the ball a ton this year, but Hunter and Allen right there together. Now we'll go look at their defense, defense really quick. Barr had a good year to tackle. Manti Teo, tackles for Ross, Brad Ross, Sharif Floyd on the inside was really good for them. INTs, nothing crazy. I want to look at Texas and Tennessee and then that'll probably wrap it up. So Johnny Football, he was third in the highs, but his stats, like Mariota probably had better stats than him. Good for a freshman, but he ran for almost a thousand yards, so that's going to help. Um, receiving... Jarvis Landry right there. Oh, Marquise Lee as well. So Landry and Lee be their number number one options next year. Quickly look at Tennessee. I don't think they're amazing this year, but just kind of see what they're building. This David Williams could be a good quarterback for them. They have Lattimore. They have Gurley, young Gurley in there as well. Receiving Kelvin Benjamin and Doriel Green Beckham too. Just giant 6'5 receivers. So Tennessee is about to bring in. They could have the number one recruiting class back-to-back -back seasons and really set themselves up to do some damage. Damage. Okay, stats, we looked at all Americans. We're gonna go end of the season here and we're gonna go look at the uh, National Signing Day, look at kind of end of that. And then, uh, yeah, that'll wrap up this year. Okay, National Signing Day, we are here. Let's see, so we knew the QB's golf. Mayfield. We knew the running back, Zeke there, Derek, Alvin Kamara. I think we knew the wide receivers as well, right? Laquan Treadwell, yeah, we weren't sure on OJ Howard. He ends up at Tennessee, huge get. Only a four star technically, but huge get. Laramie ends up at Boston College, all right. Defensive end, Bosa ends up at SC. That is tremendous for SC. TJ Watt goes to Notre Dame. Jonathan Allen gets to Tennessee. So Tennessee does get one of them. That's huge for each one. Get those big time pass rushers. D tackle, we knew that. And Chris Jones going to U Louisiana Monroe. We have Ruben Foster, he is going to Tennessee. So they get the two number one linebackers with Jalen. Okay, so a lot of those guys are actually, yeah, and they get Jalen Hargreaves. Yeah, there we go. So Tennessee's recruiting class was insanely good. Some of them are considered four stars, so it might not end up being quite as good as it looks. 
Where are they? Wow. They only got 15 recruits. So technically their recruiting class wasn't great. Jalen Tredavious White, Jonathan Allen, OJ Howard, Reuben Foster, Jalen Smith. Those guys are all five stars, actually. They're not technically, they only got 15 players, but one they easily had a top five recruiting class in my book. But the real top five, USC, they had Bosa Fuller. It's it for us, but you know, filled it out with some other really good players. Notre Dame had three five stars, Kamara, Elliott, and Watt. So that's just a great top three and then filled it out. OU right there, you don't see many big recruiting classes from OU from us, but there they are. Miami always kind of sneaking in there. Texas A&M, then Ohio State. Where's Michigan? I'm just interested. Yeah, Michigan. Michigan, where are you? Falling off a cliff. Wow. The 55th best recruiting class. So all of a sudden, Michigan is nowhere to be seen. Falling off a cliff, ladies and gentlemen. Ohio State's still hanging around, not getting quite the recruiting class as they were. But that's the top five. That's going to wrap up our, what, 2013 recruiting class, 2012 season. I'll see you guys in a minute with 2013 and 14.